What up? Hey, what's up? Much mana. Get this jazz. Yeah, as I say, where am I? I'm still getting it somewhere. Uh, it, all please. right. Um, <clears throat> hey, everyone. Welcome. Good to see you. I guess uh should probably do some kind of intro. In my mind, I'm like, uh, so my wife is like, dude, you have like a minute. And I go, yeah, but that's just whenever we get started and right. get the screen stuff set up. And she's like, but you're still alive, right? I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah. Um, so actually, I need to finish uh, grabbing the rest of the stuff from the kitchen, but I'm going to make you host because you're going to get the stuff ready, right? Yeah. So I'm streaming through ABC, uh, which is a lot cleaner. Uh, man, the NBC news stream is just like really, really bad. So is it garbage? It, it's bad. And it's okay. not my internet because everything else working fine. So sweet. So um, first off, everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for, we're going to, you know, misery loves company. So thanks for being our company while we, while we're miserable. And if you don't want to watch this and you, you know, just wanted the, you know, what's the, the commentary afterwards, then you can just fast forward to that. So either way, uh, we're here for you. Um, anyway, so Kevin, before, Hey, before I go grab my stuff, what are you drinking? What do you got there? It looks like you, was that Jameson cold brew? Carolina. Yes. Excellent oh, nice. stuff. If you like coffee, it's good. Yeah, cold brew, it. It's awesome. Um, yep. But I have a lineup of stuff because I ran out. Uh, so I have my Jameson here. I'll later be switching and finishing off my whistle pig, which I've, I've uh, advertised on a lot of podcasts prior with uh, uh, you, but I'm a little bit left of that stuff. Okay. And then after that, the only thing I got really left in the house is Corbell extra smooth. So we talked about Corbell. Corbell by itself isn't bad. I'll, I'll take it. So I, I <laughs> Okay. I'm sure uh, you guys comment in the comment section how much of a, a redneck I am for for doing that, but is what it is, man. What are you? What are you? Uh, you going to be drinking? Well, I got to go grab it. Um, I'm just gonna. I just have some Evan honey, um, so I'm going to be drinking that on the rocks. Uh, Still no mate, no homemade honey. <laughs> I'm never doing that again, dude. All right, I'm going to make you host, and uh, I'm going to mute my stuff and everything, but I'll be back here in just 60 seconds or so. Sounds good, bro. All right, let's see if I can get this thing streaming right away. Truman and I had a heck of a time um, trying to get this stream to work properly. Uh, luckily, we were smart enough to do it like four hours ahead of time. So like four hours ago, we started um, trying to stream it and figuring out different ways to do it. Obviously, YouTube is always the best way to to stream something like this. But, uh, you know, we, we were trying, we were looking at Twitch. We were looking at one other one that I, I've heard of a lot. It starts with a P and, and I can't remember the name of it. And we were just like rushing through different things to do. And the best interface to to share a conversation like this is Zoom. So we actually found a way, which I'm sure we're not the first people to do this. I'm sure like everyone does it this way. But uh, actually being able to stream our Zoom call directly to uh, YouTube is a live stream. So it was pretty, pretty convenient. But then we had a whole bunch of audio issues. Um, we found out that when, when Truman is streaming uh, live content off of YouTube, it's pretty choppy and hard to... Uh, follow and it would have been a, you know a bit of a headache for you guys to, to listen to if it would have been choppy like that so we found out that if you move me to host at the right time then I can stream it well so hopefully this goes without any big technical issues uh, it is our, our big idea here the only issue we're going to have going into it because when we stream uh, the actual uh, video what's going to happen and this is just a default setting in zoom and we couldn't figure out how to change it fast enough is you'll just see one of us, whomever is talking in the upper right corner is going to be showing their video. So you're not going to have both of our videos at the same time. I don't think there's going to be any commercials in this debate. There wasn't in the first one. So I don't see why there'd be uh, any in this, the second one. So um, I think what we may do if, if there are any, you know, uh, kind of dead spots in the commentary, uh, what we can do is you can actually turn the video off. We'll just put the audio of the, the conversation or the debate on and, uh, you know, we'll kind of talk over a little bit and, and, you know, exchange some stuff. And, and, you know, my thing was if they're going to mute, you know, Trump, I feel whenever they mute Trump, we should just uh, uh, let the audio play. And, and, and uh, True and I can entertain you because we do know that Biden is just going to talk nonsense like he, he normally does. So, um, yeah, that's that's the way we're going to do it. And hopefully it runs smoothly. Uh, actually, I'll try to start streaming now and see how well it works. All right, Billy, I'm back. 
Billy. Got my Evan Honey. Shit computer. Got audio. some cantaloupe and some apples and a banana. Okay. Can you see uh, my stuff? Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Beautiful. Um, we have 400,000 people watching right now on the ABC news stream. Oh, on the ABC. Um, uh, I'm going to go start the uh, locals live chat also. Awesome. Yeah. So you guys have the option of doing the, the live chat on locals. I already see a whole bunch of people uh, live chatting on uh, the YouTube stream. That's awesome, guys. Make sure to give uh, Return to Reason, Truman, some subscribers while you're here. Um, he seems to lose any when he's critical of Trump and, and gains him back when, uh, uh, you know, he, he says something smart about Trump. But we'll, we'll try to even it out for him. And that'd be, you know, awesome to see moving forward. I would I would argue that uh, my criticisms of Trump are smart as well. What's funny? Oh, they are, but it's not, not a... tolerated. Hmm? So real quick, I'm going to try the audio on here. The president has been I promising his fine. health care plan for right? years. Will we hear anything about it at all tonight? Yes. Good. All right. Good. All right. All right. Are you doing the thing where you're sharing it through the computer? Yeah. Yep. No, no, I, I hear it fine through me. All audio problems are good. No, but I'm, are you sharing the audio through that share computer audio? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you might want to turn turn it up a little bit. I just have it down now because it's Ron okay. Emanuel and he's tends to bloviate like an idiot. Act and to just um, Donald Trump. It's right. your children, How's your families, good? your future. That's what we're here to debate, for not us. Talk. Chris Christie, I hear Turn it down a, a bit at the beginning. Oh, Chris Christie, look at him. I'm surprised he doesn't have a mask on when I was on camera. I, I was watching all these pre-debate things, and every single person had a mask on while they're speaking from like a podium way away from the camera, and it's like, you guys are, are acting silly. And I would tell you that I get the I'm virtue signaling is uh, um, uh, popular right now, but demeanor, uh, it's awful. Also, another quick tip to you guys watching on YouTube, there's about a 26 second delay between uh, what we're saying and, and what we're streaming uh, than if you are streaming it live. So, uh, so they're saying, if you are please in, turn down the talking heads. So you might want to turn the volume down a little bit. Yeah, it's hard to tell how it's it's either there or it's mute. Help President Trump mm. How's that? Right. Uh, what I would so while we talk, I'll shut these guys off. But I want to make sure we have a decent audio while we're actually streaming the real debate. So if anyone would want to comment, you know, how, how does this sound like when they're actually debating? Or you want it a bit higher than that? You're going to have to respond to the people in the the chat. I'll tell you what they're yeah. saying. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I keep switching over, but then it switches over. My, yeah, don't, uh, don't do that. I need to stop doing that. Let's see right now. Sarah Fagan. I want to see if Donald Trump can put Joe Biden on his heels. Um, so it's, it's real soft right now, but I, I really just want to um, can he convince enough check our, our audio levels to make sure when we're live streaming, people can actually hear Trump. And, okay, and Hank says Biden. it's good now. Thanks, guys. So there's, really quiet. there's also, uh, I think for the people in the live chat, I think there's a uh, Babylon B. Hank says do it a little louder when they're actually debating. Yeah, uh, I that's think Babylon B actually right. has. I'm putting a, on mute a, now until it starts. Has a like a bingo card or something like that. <laughs> Whenever Biden blames Trump for something Democrats have done, that's a good one. Um, Babylon B has a bingo card, I think, um, that you can look at as well. I'm going to post that in locals and then in here. Good. Yeah, you're going to have to basically take hold of all the. Yeah. I will. Chat stuff, or I'm gonna throw it up on my side screen here. You guys are gonna momentarily see my junk, but we're out of it. We're good. What do you mean by see your junk? Oh, you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> Had enough whiskey pregame. You said whiskey. you're on the CBS live stream. I'm on the ABC. ABC, okay. Yep. George Snuffleupagus is on the oh, screen. Oh, George right Snuffleupagus. Right. Uh, oh, here we go. So I can actually look at the live stream on my other screen because I'm lucky enough to have dual screens, dual monitors up right now. So I'll be able to look at a little bit of the live chat and hopefully well, I need to figure out if I'm getting uh if I need to watch it from my own YouTube or mm -hmm. from your share on Zoom. Um yeah. what I'm actually probably gonna do here. I need to figure it out, right? Uh, yeah, you're not going to watch want to watch from the live stream because you're going to be a 26-second delay. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'm going to do this. 
So when I say we figured everything out, we almost figured everything out. That's what yeah. I mean. I mean, every all the rest of this is kind of secondary. So as long as it's going through on, they can see it. I'll figure this stuff out on my end. No big deal. Could be good. Yeah, my dual screen, I can, or my dual monitors, I can actually see the live chat and uh, what we're doing. I just need to make sure I don't get confused when looking at each of them. But um, did you, you didn't start a live chat on your thing yet, right? On your vocals? No. Cool, cool. Good to see. Good to see. All right. Well, if this works out okay, and I know Truman and I were talking about this, uh, we'd love to do something like this for election night. Uh, and maybe even bring some kind of uh, guest speakers on uh, throughout the night would be kind of cool. Uh, I know all the big guys, the Daily Wires and and uh, Blaze TVs, and I'm sure Ruben will be uh, bouncing around to a, a bunch of different um, streams that night. But you know, it's it's a much more entertaining than I thought it was going to be in 2016. And I'll talk more about like the way I voted in 2016. You know, I wasn't, I didn't vote for Trump. Uh, I didn't vote for Hillary either, but watching it was like watching the Super Bowl and your favorite team just starting to dominate. And even though I didn't vote for him, it was kind of fun to watch him uh, get the big upset. I mean, I've I've watched um, I've watched uh, some of the streams and stuff from back in 2016 just to kind of see. You know, I love watching the Young Turks old old stream where you can just see them start to frown and turn as they see that they're about to lose. Oh dude, you know, all of those oh, is the best. You know, where they, it's, it's uh, like um, in the hall, of the Valkyrie or what, or, or not no, in the hall of the mountain King, you know, where it's like, dun, 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 dun. Like there's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Relations <laughs> of, yeah. People realizing that, that Trump's going to win. Uh, they're hilarious, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good time. All right, I'm going to try to do this shifty. Just try to get both live chats up on the same screen here so I can see it from there. We are good. Ready to go. Debate's almost going to start. Technically, should have started. I will start um, putting on the audio once we see the moderator come out. I don't know if you've kind of researched uh, anything with this moderator. I know there's a bunch of stuff coming yeah. out, obviously. So uh, she's, I think she's going to be, she, she's going to be what we expect, but she, I don't think she'll be as bad as Savannah Guthrie was. My, my main curiosity is it, how much is she going to um, allow for Donald Trump to ask about Hunter? That's, that's what I want to know is how much is she going to allow that? Uh, because that's kind of the big question, right? So um yeah, I was watching the NBC with Savannah Guthrie on it, talking about how that would be an awful thing for him to bring up. Uh, and they kept saying about how, you know, all the stuff's unverified and like it, it was just kind of pathetic the way they're they're setting it up. And yeah, that's knows, idiotic. it's going to it's going to be up to him. Um, it's going to be up to Trump to push the, the Hunter Biden stuff, but he's got to do it in a smart way. If he keeps bringing back, you know, Hunter every time and starts trying to beat him over the head with it and doesn't bring any substance you know he's gonna end up losing this debate so i really hope you know he can play it smart and you know get the counter punches in when he needs to and pull back when he needs to as well uh because it's going to really wear down the people uh, who are watching this he's got to win over some undecided voters so um you know it's in his best interest to to temper down and, and make sure he's uh throwing some accurate punches Ooh, here we go. Social security, climate change, and presidential leadership. Let's Getting go close. Holy multi-screens, Batman. <laughs> so do you have the live feed yet? Good evening. Yeah. University right. in Nashville, we have Tennessee. the moderator. I'm Kristen Welker of NBC News, and I welcome you to the final 2020 presidential debate between President Donald J. Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. Tonight's debate is sponsored by the mask. Commission on Presidential Debates. I know, right? Under health and safety protocols. You might, let's see what the audio is like. I'm going to ask. The audience I bumped here it up a little bit. Promise to remain silent. Yeah. No cheers, boos, or other interruptions, except right now, oh, as we welcome as to the stage want, former Vice President Joe Biden <laughs> and President Donald J. Trump. There's Donald. Oh, coming out with the mask. 
I thought he was taking his mask off so he could cough into his hand real fast and <laughs> whip it back on. Wouldn't that be amazing? That would be awesome. Yeah, let me go back to the live chat. All right, we are at 879,000 watching this debate right now. will cover six major topics. At the beginning of each section, each candidate will have two minutes uninterrupted to answer my first question. The debate commission will then turn on their microphone only when okay. it is their turn to answer. And so the commission the will turn commission it off that, exactly that, uh, when the two minutes have expired. This. After that, both microphones will remain on. But on behalf of the voters, I'm going to ask you to please speak one at a time. The goal is for you to hear each <laughs> other luck, and for the American people to hear every word of what you both have to say say. And so with that, if you're ready, let's start. Let's and we will it. begin with Come the on. fight against the coronavirus. President Trump, the first question is for you. The country is heading into a dangerous new phase. More than 40,000 Americans are in the hospital tonight with COVID, including record numbers here in Tennessee. And since the two of you last shared a stage, 16,000 Americans have died from COVID. So please be specific. How would you lead the country during this next stage of the coronavirus crisis? Two minutes uninterrupted. Now that's an interesting question, that it would be, how would you lead us during the next stage, not right. how, what would you have done differently? What would you have done differently is a question Biden can't answer. But does like she change it horrible disease when she goes came to Biden? From China. It's a I don't know. pandemic. It's all over the world. You see the spikes in Europe and many other places right now. Uh, if you notice, the mortality rate is down 85 percent. Uh, the excess mortality rate is way down and much lower than almost any other country. And we're fighting it, and we're fighting it hard. There is a spike. There was a spike in Florida, and it's now gone. There was a very big spike in Texas. It's now gone. There was a very big spike in Arizona. It's now gone. And there are some spikes and surges in other places. They will soon be gone. We have a vaccine that's coming. It's ready. It's going to be announced within weeks, and it's going to be delivered. We have the best uh, vaccine. Operation Warp Speed, which is the military. The what a great to name. The vaccine. I, I, I agree. Just get just on that. that uh, I was in the hospital. There you go. I had it, and I got he better. And I he's, will tell you, he's saying the thing that, that I think Scott Adams suggested, which is who I has a handle on this? People could say it was a cure, but uh, I was in for a short period of time, and I got better very fast, or I wouldn't be here tonight. Yeah, but he's laying it out that's not immune, so self-absorbed right now, which I like. Yep. he's doing it in a very tempered that, manner. I'm right immune. Now. Uh, more and more people are. Uh, getting better. We have uh, a problem Optimistic. that's a worldwide problem. This is a worldwide problem. But I've been congratulated by the heads of many countries on what we've been able to do uh, with the if you if you take a look at what we've done in terms of goggles and Say masks Biden was either surprised by that comment, a little head jag or and he in particular pooped ventilators. His pants. We're now making ventilators. I mean, he probably pooped his pants, but, you know, who wouldn't distributing them all over the world. It will go away. And as I say, we're rounding the turn. We're rounding the corner. It's going yeah, away. Eric okay. made a really good point in the chat there. How would you lead the country out of this crisis? You have two minutes uninterrupted. Okay, 200, so 20,000 Americans yeah. dead. If you hear nothing else, I say tonight. Leading, he's gone back. This. Anyone who's responsible for not taking control, in fact, not saying I'm, I take no responsibility initially. Anyone who's responsible for that many deaths should not remain. Yeah, the way the, United States the way she asked Trump, it was, Where there are what, what will you do during the next phase mm -hmm. of the crisis? And Biden, it was. How will you lead the country out of this? That's right. I didn't catch that framing, but you're absolutely right. Compared to what's going on in Europe, as the New England Medical Journal said, they're starting from a very low rate. We're starting from a very high rate. The expectation is we'll have another 200,000 Americans dead between now and the end of the year. If we just wore these masks, the president's own advisor to blaming him, Trump, take a drink, 100,000 <laughs> lives. Take a drink to that. And we're in a circumstance where the president thus far and still has no plan, no God, comprehensive stupid plan. plan. What I would do I mean, is this make is sure just we a Democratic talking point. To I got a plan a all the time. Yeah, I would just sure him saying he does the thing. He does the thing where he says, I would make sure it happened. They say, how would you enforce it? Well, you can't nationally mandate it, but I'd ask everyone to. Okay, Timely. so the only thing is, is you would ask everyone to? Yeah, I'd go to the mayors. What if the mayors don't? I'd talk to the city council. But he never answers the question of what if they say no? Like, 
serious, most that is, serious. That's not a plan. Whole world said for the first time ever that this, the way this president has responded to this crisis, has been absolutely tragic. And so, folks, I will take care of this. I will end this. I will make sure we have a plan. President no Trump, plan. I'd like there we to go. follow up with answer, you plan. and your comments. You talked about taking a What's therapy. your plan? I'll make sure we have a plan. General, you also said a vaccine will be coming within weeks. Yes. Is that a guarantee? Is, no, it's not is, a guarantee, but oh, it will be smart. by the end of the year. Don't but I think the it has a good chance. There are two companies, I think, within a matter of weeks, and it will be distributed very quickly. Can you tell us which companies? Uh, Johnson & Johnson is doing very right. well. Might have a little bit of asbestos in it. Well. Yeah. Pfizer is doing okay. very well. Ideally. And we have others. Then we also Pfizer have makes others Viagra, that we're working so we on very closely with other countries, in particular yep. Europe. Let me follow Biden's up. down with that new information. You have said a vaccine is coming soon within weeks now. Your own officials say it could take well into 2021 at the earliest for enough Americans to get vaccinated. And even then they say the country will be wearing masks and distancing into 2022. Is your timeline realistic? No, I think my timeline is going to be more accurate. I don't know that they're counting on the military the way I do. Yeah, but that's we, exactly right. He lets particular the states handle it how they want, mm -hmm. man. And this is a very easy decision. I'm, I'm responding to Chad also. Have the vaccine, yep. yeah, I'm, and I'm we expect to have a hundred million vials as soon as we have the vaccine. He's ready to go. Vice President Biden, your Good reaction and just forty percent. I don't of know if it's the muting they, thing. They it's also helping him right now. He's not vaccine. interjecting. Just let if Biden it was talk approved, for a bit. perhaps, yeah. I mean, Biden's not doing Americans bad, confidence but in a vaccine, if it were approved, make sure it's he's totally going to wear down. Transparent. I think that Biden, See it. Biden, no. calm. Go through all the process. But Biden is calm. He's and still gives time. no good answers. Easter last time. This then is that's time. enough for Trump to, to just win, as long as yeah. Trump is also calm. Dark winter. All things being equal, what I said in my pre-debate video is plan, and there's no Biden problem. has to give answers, clear answers. For the majority so people think he's a known entity. Right now, he's an unknown entity because he won't answer a damn thing. So I think that even if he does well. And he seems like he's disease, with it. Which we didn't at the beginning. And if he doesn't have any answers, that's Man. still not going to be good enough. From coming in heavily infected and then ultimately Europe. But China was in January. Months later, he was saying I was xenophobic. I did it too soon. Now he's saying, oh, I should have, uh, I should have, you know, moved quicker. But he didn't move quicker. He was months behind me, many months behind me. And frankly, he, he should talk about the campaign events Biden was well, having in March. Yeah. And it was a total disaster, far less lethal, but it was a total disaster. Had that had this kind of numbers, 700,000 yeah. people would be dead right now. But it was a far less lethal disease. Uh, look, his own person who ran that for him, who, as you know, was his uh, chief of staff, said it was catastrophic. It was horrible. We didn't know what we were doing. Now he comes up and he tells us how to do this. Also, everything that he said about the way every single move that he said we should make, that's what we've done. We've done all Nail of them. Nail But he was way behind yeah, the us. plan. Dude, Vice President Biden, you're Call him out for the plan. I wish he would say the thing about the campaign events. Hmm. Access from China. And he did it late after 40 countries had already done that. In addition to that, what he did, he made sure that we had 44 people that were in there in China trying to get to Wuhan to determine what exactly the source was. What did the president say in January? He said, no, he said, this is, he's being transparent. The president of China is being transparent. We owe him a debt of gratitude. We, ought to, we have to thank him. And, and then what happened was we started talking about using the Defense Act to make sure we go out and get whatever is needed out there to protect people. And again, I go back to this. He had nothing, he did virtually nothing. And then he gets out of the hospital and he talks about we're this Quite is all, a jump don't in the timeline there. It's all, all going to be over soon. Come on. There's not another serious Come on, time. man. It's just going to be over soon. President Trump, your reaction? Say, over There's soon, no substance. We're learning to live with it. We literally we said nothing choice. there. We can't lock so I'm so saying, dude. Did like, you watch Jason Whitlock's interview with him? I didn't the get to yet, to lock no. Oh, Jason man. Whitlock, obviously made a lot of money. No, so Whitlock said, yes, Trump little, asked Whitlock if he had any advice little, for the debate. Little, uh, the president and uh, to put my and Whitlock said, let Biden speak. And go He'll away. do the work for you. Let Biden speak. 
I can't hilarious. do it. Absolutely. Kirsten, every, t every meeting I had, every meeting I had, and I'd meet a lot of families, including Gold Star families and military families, every meeting I had, and I had to meet them. I had to. It would be horrible to have canceled everything. I said, you know, Biden's this is dangerous. Back. And you catch it. And you know, I it's caught it. Keep it in the head. I learned yeah, a write lot. It down. You're gonna I learned that. a lot. Great doctors, great hospitals. Mm -hmm. And now I recovered. 99.9 of young people recover. 99% of people recover. We have to recover. We can't close up our nation. We have to open our school and we can't close up our yeah. nation. Optimism helps to have a right nation. now. Mm -hmm. he, he can't he keep has doing the scare tactics. Can it's, get it's sick so with COVID-19 and can pass it. I mean, Vice President Biden, day. I want to talk broadly about strategy, though. You have to respond to that. 30 seconds, please, and then seconds. I have a question. No, number one. He says that we're, uh, you know, we're learning to live with it. People are learning to die with it. You folks home will have an empty chair at the kitchen table this morning. That man or wife going to bed tonight and Night reaching day, over man. to try to touch their... What the hell kind of answer is this? Her husband Just was. Just scare tactics, gone. dude. It, this Learning is to despicable. live with it. Come on. We're dying with it because he has never said... He said, he said it's dangerous. When's the last time? Is it really dangerous still? Is we there an answer? People is dangerous This now? is why you let this guy talk. He has... No, uh, I take no responsibility. Let me talk about your two. Excuse me, I take, <laughs> I take full responsibility. It's not my fault that he came here. It's China's fault. And you know what? It's not Joe's fault that he came here either. It's smart. It's China's smart. fault. They kept it from going into the rest of China for the most part, but they didn't keep it from coming out to the world, including Europe and ourselves. Vice President Biden. Oh, man, he's fact good. is that well. when uh -huh. we knew it was coming, when it hit, what happened? What did the president say? He said, don't worry. He probably said something about how he wasn't going to get impeached because that's what was going yeah. on. Maybe uh, he said he was kidding when he said that. But a lot of people thought it was serious. Yeah. A whole, oh, that's whole what bunch of people is it, died from is it, bleach. Today, he's yeah, that's dumb. But if, if Trump would have said, like, really focused on it, which we didn't have the information for him to do that. But if Trump would have done that, they would have said it's a distraction from the impeachment. I mean, there I is no saying. answer here. There's no right answer here. When I closed, he said I shouldn't have closed. True. And that Facts went on for true. months. What Nancy Pelosi no. said the same thing. She was dancing on the streets in Chinatown <laughs> in San Francisco. But there we I, go. He <laughs> said, a good one. This is a terrible He's laughing thing. He's he knows it's true. I think he called yeah. me racist, even. And because I was closing it to China. Yeah. Now he says I should have closed it earlier. It Come just, on, Biden. Joe, it doesn't matter. I didn't say either of those things. You certainly did. did. You you certainly did. did. I okay. talked about a xenophobia in a different context. It wasn't about It's not a different context. Coming to the United States. All right, I want to talk about both yeah. of your How about your running mate? Yeah, okay. Using those words yeah. against you. Close the border. Well, let's, That's obvious. Dumb, dude. This is the worst answer. Ooh. That quickly, Vice President no. Biden. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about your different strategies toward dealing with this. Mr. Vice President, you suggested you would support new shutdowns if scientists recommended it. What do you say to Americans who are fearful that the cost of shutdowns, the impact on the economy, the higher rates of hunger, depression, good domestic and so substance far. abuse outweighs the job. risk of exposure to the virus? That's a well, great I'm question. Gonna, I'm going to shut down the virus, not the country. It's his ineptitude that caused the, the virus, plan. That caused the country <laughs> to shut down. That's a good plan. Sees, babe. Why business has gone Which under? button do you oh, press God. for shut down the virus and not the country? He's going to throw and on a white coat. Concerned. Those uh -huh. other concerns are real. Get That's why lab. he should have been, instead of in a sand Sniff trap, a few in interns, call, of course, he should have been negotiating shut with down Nancy the virus. Pelosi and That's the rest the of the Democrats and Republicans about what to do about the acts they were passing for billions of dollars to make sure people had the capacity. But you haven't ruled out more shutdowns. I agree with Eric. He said well, he's no, doing I, a good job. I'm not shutting down the name, but there are, look, they need standards. The standard is if you have a reproduction rate in a community that's above a certain level, everybody says, slow up. More social distancing. Do not Say open Trump perked up when he said reproduction do not open rate. gymnasiums. Yep. Do not open until you get this under control, under more control. But when you do open, give the people the capacity to be able to open and have the capacity to do it safely. For example, schools. Schools, they need a lot of money to open. They need to you deal with ventilation they systems. They need to deal with smaller classes, more teachers, more pods. And he's refused to support that money. You know, or at least Biden, Biden doesn't believe in science. Points. Well, Biden doesn't believe so, in science. Right? Someone in the YouTube chat just yeah, said something that was really good. Um, the Sisfian yeah. Journal said Biden's talking and talking points. Well, I think that's a really that's that's exactly right. When you, you it's look not at substance. It's just talking points. Democrats, Democrats, all they're shut down so tight and they're dying. They're dying. And he supports all these people. 
All he talks about is shutdowns. No, we're not going to shut down, and we have to open our schools. And it's like, as an example, I have a young son. He also tested positive. By the time I spoke to the doctor the second time, he was fine. It just went away. Young people. I guess it's their immune system. Let me follow up with you, President Trump. You've demanded schools open in person and insist they can do it safely. But just yesterday, Boston became the latest city to move its public school system entirely online after a coronavirus spike. What is your message to parents who worry that sending their children to school will endanger not only their kids, but also their teachers and okay. families? I want to open the schools. Only their uh, teachers. The transmittal rate to yep. the teachers is uh, very also, small. Also, I, I wish to, uh, Trump would bring up the fact that... Uh, Miss that in civics we class. Can't do this. We um, can't keep this country closed. This is a massive uh, country. No, a massive economy. if they talk about that's the WHO said they need to open up. Schools in Europe are opening up. He needs to bring that up. Say, okay, who you know who's doing it right, and why do we need to close the schools? You know, like there are lots of examples that you know. I think we're actually the minority here when it comes to schools being closed down. And he wants to close down. He'll close down the country oh, people are, if people one aren't person kids. In, I our, get that. in our massive but bureaucracy again, says we believe in science, which I hate. Vice President Biden, right. you're definitely not follow, true. Follow the we data. We're able to walk and chew gum at the same time. We ought to be able to safely open. But would they? Oh boy, you can't chew gum. Those need dentures. To be able to, for example, if you're going to open a business, have social distancing within the business. You need to have, if you have a restaurant, you need to have plexiglass dividers so people cannot. Infect one another. Got to shoot him in the leg. Be in a position where you can yeah, exactly shoot, shoot the virus in the leg. Glass dividers. Gonna have cubicles. You need to be able to. This train. is the, what happens with a lot of these policies from the left. They're really great ideas. There's no way to enforce it without massive authoritarian measures. What what happens when a business? You know they do put the mask mandate up and people walk in and say I don't want to be there. You got to call the cops. You know. Like, you know, no one's going to actually do that. There's no enforcement. Let me follow up with you quickly. By the way, I will say this. If you go and look at what's happened to New York, it's a ghost town. Mm. It's a ghost town. And when you talk about plexiglass, these are restaurants that are dying. These are businesses with no money. Putting a plexiglass is unbelievably expensive. And it's not the answer. I mean, you're going to sit there in a cubicle wrapped around with plastic. It's these are businesses that are dying. Joe, you can't do that to people. You Which just can't take a look bad. at New York and what's happened to my wonderful city. For, I wouldn't have started out so that saying New York's a ghost it. It town. Vibrant. It's bad, dying. bad phrasing. Leaving New York. And I could take see that being on a Or it's now. right phrasing. Maybe it's the right phrasing. Goes town because Cuomo put a bunch of people in uh, nursing homes and let them die. Yeah, but the, blue states and red that'll states. Hit a, that'll that'll hit a the United States. And look at the Florida, states that are Trump having such a spike in the coronavirus. They're the red states. They're the states in the Midwest. They're the states in the upper Midwest. That's where the spike is occurring significantly. Right here. But they're Let's all go. Americans. They're all Americans. And what we have to do is say, wear these masks, number one. Make sure we get the help that the businesses need that has money's already been passed to do that. It's been out there since the beginning of the summer, and nothing's happened. President, New York has lost more than 40,000 people, 11,000 people in nursing homes. President Trump, what when about— you say spike, take a look at what's happening in Pennsylvania, where they've had it closed. Take a look at what's happening with your friend in Michigan, where her husband's the mm. only one allowed to do anything. It's been mm. like— Your friend. Now, yep. it was just ruled unconstitutional. Take a look at North Carolina. They're having spikes, and they've been closed, and they're getting killed financially. We can't let that happen, Joe. You can't let that happen. We have to open up, and we understand the disease. We have to protect our seniors. We have to protect our elderly. We have to protect yeah. especially our seniors yeah, with heart damn. problems and diabetes problems, and we will protect them. We have the best testing in the world by far. That's why we have so many cases. Let me follow That's up with you challenge. before we move on to our next section. President Trump, this week you called Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's best-known infectious disease expert, quote, a disaster. You described him and other medical experts as, quote, idiots. If you're not Take listening... Listening to she all needs, of she needs to ask him that question, but this is... Don't wear masks. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. As you know, this is not going to be a problem. 
So uh, I think he's a Democrat, but that's okay. So he far, said, this is not uh, going to, to me, be a problem. it's obvious we Trump is winning this debate. Problem at all. Very when clear, very obvious. When it comes I to said, Anthony Fauci said, the same and standard. Others, and but others, remember, and we need to compare these guys nobody in two knew. different, Look, nobody two knew different what this standards. Thing was. Nobody knew and the question we need to ask from, is Trump beating his standard, which I think he is, and is Biden beating his standard, which that bar is much lower. Like he hasn't stumbled across his words. He hasn't said anything incredibly stupid. There's no substance, but substance gets him in trouble. He happens so to I think it's important person. when we're looking Vice at President these Biden, two. Your response Trump's winning the debate. Move on to the I think they're, they're both. I think Biden's around his standard the and Trump's succeeding his. It's a good and thing for Trump. American people. And let's see, you know, he how was Biden told this was a serious virus that spread in the air, and it was much worse than much worse than the flu. He went on record and said to one of your colleagues, recorded that in fact he knew how dangerous it was, but he didn't want to tell us. He didn't want to tell us because he didn't want us to panic. He didn't want us, Americans don't panic. He panicked. But guess what? In the meantime, we find out in the New York Times the other day that in fact, his folks went to Wall Street and said, this is a really dangerous thing. And a memo out of that meeting, not from his administration, but from some of the brokers said, sell short, because we got to get moving. It's a dangerous problem. Well, this is I'm going to give you 30 seconds to heard. respond, and then we're going to move Street on. One, I don't know. Somebody went to Wall Street. You're the one that takes all the money from Wall Street. I don't take it. Joe, I have. You, you have raised a lot of money, that tremendous amounts of money. Made yep. honest dollar in his life. you raise money, deals are made. Yep. Yeah. I could raise so much more money oh. as president and as somebody that knows most of those people. I could call the heads of Wall Street, the heads of every company in America. I would blow away every record, but I don't want to do that because it puts me in a bad position. Denture's and then you bring up, up Wall Street. You shouldn't, yeah. be bring- stop smiling. You're the one that takes the money you shouldn't be bringing up Wall Street. <laughs> yeah, you could blow away your records that like you wouldn't believe. Wow. We- That's a hell of an answer, man. <laughs> That's with a deep down right now. The money that she was All right, gentlemen, we're going to talk about average we're contribution gonna... $43. All right, we're going to move on to our next How did you, what did he gross, like $11 million, million dollars last year or something like that? And I do like want to start with the I don't know, man. and his wife, he something has, ridiculous. He has some sketch income, put it that way. Again, that both Russia and Iran are working to influence this election. Both countries have obtained U.S. voter registration information, these officials say, yep. and Iran Who's Iran trying to meddle on behalf of? I don't know. Iran and China? Mr. Vice President. I think they're Joe Jorgensen people. I made it clear, and I ask everyone else to take the pledge. Well, Joe Jorgensen. Any country, no matter who it is, that interferes in American elections will pay a price. They will pay a price. He's got a plan. It's been overwhelmingly clear this election. My plan is that I don't want him to do it. Russia has been involved. Throw COVID at him. China has been involved to some degree. Mm-hmm. Now we that uh, that uh, Iran is involved. They We've will known it pay for a, a while. price if I'm elected. They're interfering with American sovereignty. That's what's going on right now. They're interfering with American sovereignty. And to the best of my knowledge, I don't think the president said anything to Putin about it. I don't think he's talking to them a lot. I don't think he said a word. I don't know why. Well, you guys he get mad at him every time he talks to Putin. Talks to Putin. Yep. And I don't know what he has That's recently true. said guess is he'd probably be more outspoken with regard to the Iranians. But the point is this. <laughs> so I want you we are in a situation <laughs> where we have foreign company countries trying to interfere in the outcome of our election. His own, own yeah, national security advisor told him that what is happening with his buddy, well, I, won't, I, shouldn't, well, I will, his buddy, <laughs> he's being used as a Russian pawn. Oh, don't he's bring up the Rudy G. Uh-huh. Russian, he, he's that is stepping not true. in some dangerous and then territory what happens? there. Nothing happens. Like that, and then you that's find a out bad that debate strategy. I think he tried to stop himself because he knew Russia he could not oh, yeah. expose himself oh, to yeah. it. Get elected the next president of the United States because they know I know them and they know me. I don't understand. They know I know me. Knowing uh, them knows who they might like know me knowing them and us. Americans. When he's engaged in activities that are trying to destabilize all of How NATO. long has this been? I feel I like we've listened to this guy for an hour. It, but it's worth it's like asking grandpa the question. The why isn't that being done? Fucking nonsense. Any country that interferes with us will, in fact, pay a price because they're affecting our sovereignty. President Trump, same question to you. Let me, let me ask the yeah. question. You're going to have two minutes yeah. to respond for two elections. Yeah. In a while. There has been substantial interference from foreign adversaries. What would you do in your next term to put an end to this? Two minutes uninterrupted. Well, let me respond to the first part, as Joe answered. Joe got three and a half million dollars from Russia, and it came through (laughs) Putin because he was very friendly with the 
former mayor of Moscow, and it was the mayor of Moscow's wife. And you got three and a half million dollars. Your family got three and a half million dollars. And, you know, someday you're going to have to explain why did you get three and a half? I never got any money from Russia. I don't get money from Russia. Now, about your thing last night. There I it is. And through Biden. John, Watch Biden. It was fantastic. DNI. He said the one thing that's common to both of them. They both want you to lose because there has been nobody tougher to Russia with between the sanctions, nobody tougher than me on Russia. Between the sanctions, between all of what I've done with NATO, you know, I've got the NATO countries to put up an extra- That was one. smart for him to just drop that in there. You got three and a half million and then just yeah. go move on to some other stuff. That was good. That was a little uh, drive-by. I sold tank busters to Ukraine. There has been nobody tougher on Russia than Donald Trump. And I'll tell you, they were so bad. They took over the, the submarine port. You remember that very well. During your term, during you like and Barack Obama, they took Crimea. over of what should have been Ukraine. You handed it to them. But you were getting a lot of money from Russia. They were paying you a lot of money, and they probably still are. But now, with what came out, <laughs> today, it's even worse. All of the emails, the emails, the horrible emails of the kind of money that you were raking in, you and your family. And Joe, you were vice president when some of this was happening, and it should have never happened. And I think you owe an explanation to the American people. Why is it? Somebody just had a news conference a little while ago who was essentially supposed to work with you and your family. But what he said was damning. And regardless of me i think you have to clean it up and talk to the american people maybe you can do it right now uh -huh. vice president Biden, you may respond <laughs> in seconds. Here. and then i do I, want to follow up on the election security i have straight, not Jack. taken a penny from any foreign source ever in my life we yeah. learned he's this got president he makes finite claims like that china, and then he gets screwed over later answer. on oh yeah does business in china thank you and is Everyone who's a billionaire does business money. in China. I have not taken yeah, a single exactly. any country whatsoever, ever. Number one. Number two. Well, except for the United States. Say is Hunter taxpayer. hasn't. All of my tax returns, 22 years. Go look at them. 22 years of my tax return. You have not released a single solitary year of your tax return. What are you hiding? That's Why? not really a good answer. Biden didn't really you know answer the what? question. Russia's paying I mean, he kind of did. Yeah. Uh, well, he doesn't have I to, though. About that. Doesn't have all to. your businesses all around the country, all around the world. And China's building a new road to a new ga uh, a, a golf course you have overseas. So what's going on here? Why don't release your tax return or stop talking about corruption? President Trump, your response. First of all, I called my accountants, underwrote it. I'm going to release them as soon as we can. I want to do it. And it'll show how successful, how great this company is. But much more importantly than that, people were saying $750. I asked them a week ago, I said, what did I pay? They said, sir, you prepaid tens of millions of dollars. I prepaid my tax. So tens Truman, over the I last think the uh, chat years, disconnected. Tens of millions of dollars YouTube, I prepaid. You know. because seeing it? They think Are you? Well, I'm not seeing They think anymore. I may have to pay tax. So I already prepaid. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it. In written whenever they write this they oh, keep talking sexism. about 750 dollars which Excuse i think me. is a filing fee but let me just tell you i prepaid millions and millions of dollars in taxes number one number two i don't That's make right money. hank you do i don't make money from ukraine you do i don't make money from russia you made three and a half million dollars joe and your son gave you they even have a statement that we have to give 10 percent to the big man. You're the big man, I think. I don't know. Maybe you're not. But you're the big man, I think. <laughs> that was a good one. That yeah. was a good one. <laughs> Joe, what's You see Joe's on? face? <gasps> Shit, I'm like, maybe maybe uh, Mrs. Biden's the big man. We don't know. Where's yep. the pants? You just said you spoke to your accountant yes. about potentially releasing your taxes. Mm. Did he tell you when you can release them? Do you as have a the deadline for when you're going to release them? I get American treated people? worse than the Tea Party got treated. Because I have a have lot of people in there, yeah. deep down in the IRS, they treat me horribly. We made a deal, it was all settled until I decide to run for president. I get treated very badly by the IRS, very unfairly. But we had a deal all done. As soon as we're completed with the deal, I want to release it. But I have paid millions and millions of dollars, and I, it's worse than paying. 
I paid in advance. It's called prepaying your taxes. Okay. I paid in advance. I want to ask you yep. both about questions regarding your potential foreign entanglements and questions that have been raised to give you both a chance Whoa, to. Whoa, really? Respond very quickly, and then I'll get to my question. Does, Why does she did call he? He's out been saying this for four years. Hunter, though, specifically. Show us. Just show us. Stop playing around. And I think these responses by Biden, years, although they don't really have taxes. substance, nobody I think knows, Mr. Good Prince, responses what they do by him, know to be honest with you. Is you're not paying I'll your taxes. I'll tell you the parts that are good, and I'll tell you the parts that are When last time he said what he paid, he said, I only pay that little because I'm smart. I know how to game the system. Yeah. Come on. No. Come on, folks. So, President Trump, and then I want to get I'm sorry, to but the, the response the saying, because I'm I smart, put through a is a great response. Change. For three years, True, yeah. it started before I even got elected. They spied on my campaign. No president should ever have to go through what I went through. Let me just say this. Mueller and 18 angry Democrats and FBI agents all over the place spent $48 million. They went through everything I had, including my tax returns, and they found absolutely no collusion and nothing wrong. 48 million. I guarantee you, if I spent 1 million on you, Joe, I could find plenty wrong. Because right. the kind of things that <laughs> you and the kind of money that your family has taken, I mean, your brother- I will take a drink, that's- Millions of dollars. Your other brother, brother made a fortune, and it's all through you, Joe. And they say you get some of it, and you do live very well. You have houses all over the place. You live very well. All right, gentlemen, let me just ask. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Vice President Biden, there's a question. What was in China and for a Ukrainian energy company when you were vice president? In retrospect, was anything about those relationships inappropriate or unethical? I can't believe she's asking this. This is great. A bit of a leading question. With regard to Ukraine. She kind of let him in. We had this saying, whole question about whether or not because he was on the board of right. a Burisma, a company, that somehow I had done something wrong. Yet every single solitary person when he was going through his impeachment, testifying under oath who worked for him, said, I did my job impeccably. I carried out U.S. policy. Not one single solitary thing was out of line. Not a single thing. Number one. Number two, the guy who got in trouble in Ukraine was this guy trying to bribe the Ukrainian government to say something negative Dumb. about me, Dumb. which they would not hey, remember do there's the impeachment and did not do anything about that. Never, uh -huh. ever, ever happened. My son has not made money in terms of oh. this thing about, uh, mm -hmm. what are you talking about? China. I have my not son has not made money in terms of China. In terms oh, okay. of China. He's the only one. Yeah. Didn't Nobody make else a has lot made of yen. Money from China. Never President Trump. Let me By ask way, my question to you. But could I just one one thing? Very quickly. His son. So, well, the amount of money he probably paid him in heroin. Uh, was sadly no longer in the military service. I won't get into way. that. And he didn't have a job. As soon as he became vice president, Barisma, not the best look, not the best reputation in the world. I hear they paid him 183,000 a month. Listen to this. 183, and they gave him a $3 million upfront payment. All right. And he had no I, energy. I'm going to let the vice president That's respond to that. Yeah. Wait, respond to that. Get to a question to you. Biden, Very explain no that. basis for that. Everybody investigated that. No one said anything he did was wrong in Ukraine. Okay. President. Oh, Trump. so he got the money. Okay. Yeah. Your business. You've personally. So, yes, it happened. Abroad. A report this week, which was referenced, does indicate that your company has a bank account in China. So how can voters know that you don't have any foreign conflicts of interest? Wow. Uh, well listed a, and they're all over question. the place. This I mean, I was a businessman doing business. The bank account you're referring sorry, to, every which is, single person knows about it, it's who makes over the bank account fifty million dollars. Has foreign assets. That's, That's how it this was. works. It was open to do, it right. Was, no, I don't this understand question, why this is so complicated. If, and then I it's just not, insane. It's okay for her to ask him that. I think that's okay. No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't mind the question. I was thinking about I'm just it, thinking and I how decided the American I'm not people do think it. if they think Didn't like it. I decided not to do it's it. Had an account open, and I closed it. Okay. Excuse me. And then, unlike him, where he's vice president and he does business, I then decided to run for president after that. That was before. So I closed it before I even ran for president, let alone became president. Big difference. 
He is the vice president of the United States, and his son, his brother, and his other brother are getting rich. They're like a vacuum cleaner. They're sucking okay, up money president every Trump, place thank you. We do need to true. move on. I do want to ask you, no. uh, Vice President Biden, Biden's about, about to challenge China. Him to Let's push talk contest. about China more broadly. Uh, there have, of course, President Trump has said that they should pay not being fully transparent in regards to... Hey, good for her. Good for her. And please be specific. What would that look like? What I'd make China do is play by the international rules, not like he has done. He has caused the deficit of China to go up, not down, with China, up, not down. We are making sure that in order to do business in China, you have to give all your intellectual property. You have to get a, have a partner in China that's 51 percent. We would not do that at all, number one. Number two, we're in a situation where China would have to play by the rules internationally as well. When I met with Xi that, and uh, when I was still vice president, he said we're setting up air identification zones in the, in the South China Sea. You can't fly through them. I said, we're going to fly through them. We just flew <laughs> Bombers through it. We're not going to pay attention. They have to play to by the rules. And what's he do? I don't know. Voices, guys like the thugs say, like in North Korea and and uh, and the Chinese president and Putin and others. And he pokes his finger in the eye of all of our friends, all of our allies. We make up only we were 25 percent, 25 percent. Of the world's Someone said in the chat, she's doing a really good job of holding both uh, candidates' feet to the fire. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. I am I am very very impressed with Kristen Welker so far. She's doing right. great. Also, we did. I think you and see both candidates still sticking in the range like, of other obviously we Trump prepared president for this. significantly All right, let's talk about better. Oh yeah, yeah. But the difference said, is Biden sticks on talking points and just kind of rigidly sticks to them. Where Trump again plays it kind of like a stand-up comedian. He 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 knows the central point and then he just starts weaving around and poking the bear and then coming back and counter like ten million dollars a year for introductions. President Trump on China policy though. What specifically are you going to do? What specifically are you going to do to make China pay? You've said you're going to hold it back and he he let her talk. This is great. What are we going to do to China? We're going to make we're going to make them pay for the wall. Taxpayers China money. <laughs> just made me spill my damn whiskey, Kevin. Twenty-eight billion, and you know what they did to pay it, Joe? They devalued their currency, and they also paid up. And you know who got the money? Our farmers, our great farmers, because they were targeted. You never charged them anything. Also, I charged them twenty-five percent on dumped steel because they were killing our steel industry. We were not going to have a steel industry. Okay. And now we have a steel. Okay, industry. Vice President Biden, your response, please. My response is: Look, this isn't about. There's a reason why he's bringing up all this malarkey. On, There's a reason. Malarkey. For that. We don't want to talk about oh. the substantive issues. It's not about his family and my family. It's about your family. And your oh, family. come on. Biden a, had the easiest must, response I've ever heard to family. this. Like, you could have crushed Trump on this talking badly point. right now. You're sitting at the kitchen table this morning deciding if he knew well, we can't get anything about economics because we have to wait another crush Trump or so. right there. Or are we going to be able to pay the mortgage? Or who's Biden gonna, looks so dumb, dude. This is crazy. Oh, wow. What That's such a, what a bad, shift. bad answer. They're in trouble. We should be talking about your families, but that's the last thing he wants to talk about. I want to say, I want to Eric tell says drink. OK, dude, that such a bad response. Again, he could have Let's get off crushed this Trump thing, on And there. then he looks the family around the table, everything. Just right. a typical politician when I see. Oh, that. wow. That's, not a That's good. Okay. Call That's him out. I got elected. That's that good. Let's, Let's get off the subject of China. Let's talk around sitting around the table. All right. Come on, Joe. You can do better. We're going to talk was about good. North Korea now. President Call him out with a typical politician. <laughs> that was excellent. Look at that. Biden can't say anything like that for the rest of the debate because he just said, "Let's." What is this typical politician crap? He just removed that arrow. So, well, from if he traps him, traps him in a, a Marco Rubio trap where he's like, "This is what you're going to do for the rest of the conversation," and he does it again. Yep, calls him That's out right. for it. That'd be perfect. When I met with Barack Obama, who sat in the White House Barack right at the beginning, Obama. had a great conversation. It was supposed to be 15 minutes, and it was well over an hour. He said the biggest problem we have with North is North Korea. He indicated we will be in a war with North Korea. Guess what? It would be a nuclear war. And he does have plenty of nuclear capability. In the meantime, I have a very good relationship with him. 
Different kind of a guy, but he probably thinks the same thing about me. We have a different <laughs> kind of a guy. Yeah. Very good relationship. Dude. And there's no war. And you know, about hey, two months that. ago, First president he broke in into decades, a certain uh, area. They said, oh, war? there's going to be trouble. I said, yeah, no. I don't know, long time. That's right. Look, instead of being in a war where millions of people, Seoul, you know, is 25 miles away, millions and millions, 32 million people in Seoul, millions of people would be okay. dead right now. President we Trump, that's what Anya said in the locals Biden. chat. said, every time Biden looks at the camera, I feel like I need to take a shower. <laughs> you think you would be able to, to rein in this screen. persistent threat? Because right? I think <laughs> clear, which we were making clear to China, they had to be part of the deal because here's the re I made it clear and as a spokesperson of the administration right. when I went to China that they said, why are you moving your... What is this answer? <laughs> so why are you far. moving more forces here? Why are you continuing to do uh, um, uh, so military down, maneuvers man. with South Korea? I said, because... North Korea is a problem, and we're going to continue to do it so we can control them. We're going to make sure we can control them and make sure they cannot hurt us. And so if you want to do something about it, step up and help. If not, it's going to continue. What has he done? He's legitimized North Korea. He's talked about his good buddy, who's a thug, a thug, and he talks about how we're better off. And yeah. they are having much more capable missiles, able to reach U.S. territory much more easily than ever did before. Let me follow up with you, Vice President Biden. You've said you wouldn't meet with Kim Jong-un without preconditions. Are there any conditions under which you That's would meet with him? That's a dumb talking point to on say. I'd be the same yeah, agree, he's, a, he's a thug. Oh, okay, so wait. So when Trump said bad things about him, he was going to start a war, and he's nice to him, so it's bad. So now Biden is the good guy for saying bad things about, like, it didn't, nothing coherent, man. He didn't like Obama. He didn't like, like him. He wouldn't do it. Okay, you know, I gotta give him a chance tried, to respond to that before we move do on. It. You and know that's I... okay. You know what? North Korea, we're not in a war. We have a good relationship. You know, people don't understand. Having a good relationship Trump, with leaders of other countries we have is a, a lot good of thing. We have a lot of questions to get yes, to. Not Your response. Like saying we had a good relationship with Hitler before he, in fact, invaded Europe. Well, we did have a good relationship with Stalin, though. The reason he would not meet with the President yeah. Obama. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about denuclearization. We're not going to legitimize you. We're going to continue to put stronger and stronger sanctions on you. That's why he wouldn't meet with us. All right. Let's yeah, move unless on. you put let's sanctions in the Middle American East, American that's American a big problem. President Trump, okay, we they do need to left move on. me a mess. North Korea was a mess. We and in fact, if you remember so the first two or three months, true. Tonight, any any foreign policy that Biden touched in his entire 47 year career a bit, okay. has been was garbage. A they left Absolute us garbage. a mess. And Obama would be, I think, the first to say it was the single biggest problem he thought that our country. OK, let's move on to American families and the economy. On good what job. That was good. There's that razor's edge, you know, of pushing and then also coming back. That's what Pence did perfectly, I thought, in his debate. Uh, and Harris did a good job, too. And I think that uh, both Biden and Trump are doing a good job here. And Trump is the one who needed to do the good job. So far, he is. Your administration, Mr. President, is advocating for the court to overturn it. If the Supreme Court does overturn that law, those 20 million Americans could lose their health insurance almost overnight. So what would you do if those people have their health insurance taken away? You have two minutes uninterrupted. Sure. First of all, I've already done something that nobody thought was possible. Through the legislature, I terminated the individual mandate. That is the worst part of Obamacare, as we call it. The individual yep. mandate. A fortune Hank says Biden's stumbling more. I agree. For bad health insurance. 10 p.m. Biden time. <laughs> now it's in court because Obamacare is no good. But then I made a decision. Run it as well as you can to my people, great people. Run it as well as you can. I could have gone the other route and made everybody very unhappy. They ran it. Uh, premiums are down. Everything's down. Here's the problem. No matter how well you run it, it's no good. What we'd like to do is terminate it. We have the individual mandate done. I don't know that it's going to work. If we don't win, we will have to run it. And we'll have quieter, to sis. It be better run. But it no longer is Obamacare, because without the individual mandate, it's much different. Pre-existing conditions will always stay. What I would like to do is a much better health care, much better, will always protect people with pre-existing. So I'd like to terminate Obamacare, come up with a brand new, beautiful health care. The Democrats will do it because there'll be tremendous pressure on them, and we might answer. even have the House by that time. No, it's a good doing, one. Doing health care better. We'll it's see, a good political answer. The house. But because come of up the with realities a better of today. 
always protecting can't take people away, even with pre-existing conditions. You and one can't thing very important, we have 180 million people out but there. to say I'm going to use basically the same policy, healthcare. but make Far it better and take out a lot of the bad things, like the mandate. That's obviously unconstitutional. Joe Biden is going to terminate all of those policies. These are people well, that it's it's just not. Uh, you people know, most conservative leaning people are not going to like that answer. Been successful. They have a hundred and eighty million plants. A hundred and eighty million people, families, under what he wants to do, which will basically give my thoughts here in a minute. Medicine. He won't even have a choice. They want to terminate a hundred and eighty million plans. We have done an incredible job on health care, and we're going to do even better. I think he needs to okay. say. Um, <laughs> We did have a health care plan, and John McCain was the guy who kept it kept us from passing it. I mean, if you remember that, they were actually pretty close, you know. What I'm going to do is pass Obamacare with a public option. Become Biden Care. The public option Ooh, is an option. Biden Care. Na- he gets to put if his you, name fact, on do someone. Not have the, the first, wherewithal to be, the if you time. qualify for Medicaid and you do not have the wherewithal in your state to get Medicaid, you automatically are enrolled, providing competition for insurance companies. That's what's going to happen. Secondly, we're going to Biden make sure- care. You can't. The doctor will sniff you for free at every single government. appointment, especially in insurance. Now, you cannot compete with the, the government Medicare if you understand the nature of insurance. Prices with the you are not the health care provider. Thirdly, you are the insurer. The Insurance. The reason why I had such a fight for with 20 candidates for the nomination was I support private insurance. That's why I didn't. Not one single person with private that. insurance good point. would lose very, their very insurance good point under for the my plan. Right there. It's no, true. They, very good point. They did not lose their insurance unless they chose they wanted to go to something else. Lastly, we're going to make sure we're in a situation that we actually protect pre-existing. There's no way he can protect Trump pre-existing. should have talked about um, the way he's lowered prices for pharmaceutical companies. Pharmaceutical companies are dumping a lot in no, Biden super packs. Plan. I guess we're going to get the pre-existing condition plan the same time we get the infrastructure plan that we've been waiting for since 17, 18, 19, and 20. The fact, I still have a, little, a few more minutes. I know you're getting anxious. The, <laughs> the fact is that on, stand the, fast. he's already cost the American people because of his terrible handling of the COVID virus and the economic spillover. 10 million people have lost their private insurance. And he wants to take yes, away because when you marry it to your more job, people who have it under Obamacare. And over that's like saying I get my car insurance people through my job. When they don't give me a, a all the people a, from a company COVID car are have pre-existing conditions. What are they going to yeah, do? Yeah, they're not talking about the existential, like greater philosophy of where healthcare should come from, though, man. Unfortunately. What do you say to people who have concerns that your health care plan, which includes a government insurance option, takes the country one step closer to a health care system run entirely by the government? What's I say it's ridiculous. That's the plan. It's like saying that that you is know, the plan. That is the end game. Uh, the idea that the fact that there's a public option that people can choose. That makes it a socialist plan. Look, the difference between the president, I think health care is not a privilege. It's a right. Everyone should have the right to have affordable health care. And I am very proud of my plan. It's gotten endorsed by all the major labor unions, as well as oh, as well as a, a whole range of other unions. people who, in fact, are concerned in the medical field. This is something that's going to save people's lives. And this is going to give some people an opportunity, an opportunity to have health care for their children. How many of you home are worried and rolling around Ooh, in bed tonight wondering table. what in God's name you're going to do if you get sick? Because you've lost your home insurance, your your, your health insurance, your company's gone under. We have to provide health well, insurance I know if for I get people sick with COVID, and I'm sit outside in the sun for five minutes. President Trump. <laughs> For 47 years, he didn't do it. He was now there as vice president for eight years, you and it's not him. like it was 25 hit him years on that. ago. You're a politician. You're saying Report, stuff's got to change. It was just a little while ago, right? Less than four years yeah. ago. He didn't do anything. He didn't do it. He wants Bottom socialized medicine. And it's not that he wants it. His vice president. I mean, she is is more liberal than Bernie Sanders and wants it even more. Bernie Sanders wants it. The Democrats want it. You're going to have socialized medicine, just like you went with fracking. We're not going to have fracking. We're going to stop fracking. We're going to stop fracking. Then he goes to uh, Pennsylvania spot on and he gets a nomination. Mm-hmm. Get it. He goes to Pennsylvania <laughs> and he says, oh, we're going to have fracking. And you never ask that question. And by the way, so far, I respect very much the way Ooh, you're handling this. I have to say, dang. somebody should ask the question. That's a baller move. For a year, that was good. Look at her smiling. She Dude. knows. That was awesome. He that was terrific. Her. Yeah. 
The same Governor, thing I, with socialized I medicine. I have to respond. Vice President, okay. your response, please. My response is... <laughs> <laughs> Here. Period. Period, period, period. And the Biden care proposal will, in fact, provide for that affordable health care, lower premiums. And what we're going to do is going to cost some money. It's going to cost over $750 billion over 10 years to do it. And they're going to have lower premiums. You can buy into the better plans, the cheaper plans, lower your premiums, deal with un 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 unexpected billing, and have your drug prices drop significantly. He drug keeps talking drop. about it. He hasn't done a thing. <laughs> this is your time. Pull it out. Pull it out. What he says. He's talking about socialized medicine and when he and and healthcare. When he talks about a public option, he's talking about destroying your Medicare, totally Wrong. destroyed, and destroying your Social Security. And this whole country will come down. You know, Bernie Sanders tried it Bernie. in his state. He tried it in his state. His governor was a very liberal governor. They want to make it work. Okay. It, let's hear. It was let's let Vice President Biden to work. respond. It doesn't Vice work. President he's Biden a very response. confused guy. He thinks he's running against somebody else. He's running against Joe Biden. I beat all those other people because I disagreed with them. Joe Biden he's running against. And the Run idea that we're in a situation yep. that are going to Calm Trump. Medicare. Calm Trump. This is the guy that the actuary at Medicare said, if in fact, at Social Security, if in fact he continues to withhold his plan to withhold the tax on Social Security, Social Security will be bankrupt in by 2023. With no As way opposed to, to make 2030. This is the guy who's tried exactly. to exactly. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> cut, cut it away. Is lecturing me on Social Security and Medicare? Come on. He See, tried, to, him? Of, he tried to hurt Social to Security to years question. ago. Years Dude, ago. Dude, Twitter isn't loading. Look at the records. He tried to hurt Social Security years ago. All One right, thing, let's move on. I'm going to move on. Let me, they Mr. President, I have to move week, on to the next question. They said the stock market will boom if I'm elected. If he's elected, the stock market will crash. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Very fine. quickly. Look, the idea that the stock market is booming is his only measure of what's happening. Where I come from in Scranton and Claymont, the people don't live off of the stock market. Just in the, uh, just in the last three, uh, three years during this crisis, the, the billionaires in this country made, according to the Wall Street, $700 billion more dollars. $700 billion more dollars. Because that's his only measure. What happens to the ordinary people out there? What happens to them? Let's talk about the capital. On K's, we're Kristen, we're move on, 401ks are through the roof. We're going to move on. Stock are through the Never roof. Right. And he question. doesn't come from Scranton. That's like one of the, he lived there for a short period gonna, of time before okay, he even knew we're it. We're going to move on and to the next left. question. And the people in turn for Dunder Mifflin. My next question. <laughs> As of tonight, 8 million more Americans have fallen into poverty and more families are going hungry every day. Those hit hardest are women and people of color. They see Washington fighting over a relief bill. Mr. President, why haven't you been able to get them the help they need? 30 seconds here. Because Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to approve it. I do. But you're the president. I do, but I still have to get. Unfortunately, that's one of the reasons I think we're going to take over the House because of her. Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to approve anything mm -hmm. because she'd love yeah, to have some victories. Happy. On a date called November 3rd, Nancy Pelosi does not want to approve it. We are ready, willing, and able to do something. Don't forget, we've already approved three plans, and it's gone through, including the Democrats, in all fairness. This one she doesn't want. It's near the election because she thinks it helps her politically. I think it hurts her politically. All right, Mr. Uh, Vice President, you know, the Republican That's leader a great answer. Great answer. That he can't pass it. He will not be able to pass it. He does not have Republican votes. Why isn't he talking to his Republican friends? Let me follow up with you, Vice President if we made a Biden, deal, because the let me, let me ask Vice President Biden a question. You are the leader of the Democratic Party. Why have you not <laughs> yeah, pushed the Democrats right. to get a deal for the American people? Well, I have. Wow. And have Good question. All the way back in the beginning of the summer. This is like it's not new. It's been out there. This year. Oh. No, you haven't, bro. Bro, bro, bro. Happening when I was in charge of the recovery. Oh, the one that's just loaded with crap. That's the one you're talking about. That's just sitting there, Joe. Get out of here. Come on, man. States have to balance the budget, so then have to fire fire. They have to fire firefighters, teachers, first responders, law enforcement officers, so they can keep their you cities. Mean law enforcement and officers running. are quitting. He not will not fired. support that. They have yeah, to. yeah. Let's talk about law enforcement. Let him go bankrupt. Come on. 
What's the matter the with these guys? The bill that was passed in the House was a bailout of badly run, high crime, Democrat, all run by Democrats, cities and states. It was a way of getting a lot yep. of money. Billions and billions of dollars to these kids. It was also a way of getting a lot of money from our people's pockets to people that come into our country illegally. We were going to take care of everything for them. And what that does, and I'd love to do that, I'd love to help them, but what that does, everybody all over the world will start pouring into our country. We can't do it. This Good was an answer. Them. This was a way of spending on things that had nothing to do with COVID, as per yeah, your but question. But it was increases. really a big bailout for badly run Democrat cities and states. All right, I way, wanna... If I get elected, I'm not going to. I'm running as a proud Democrat, but I'm going to be an American president. I don't see red states and blue states. What I see is American United. Yeah, that's states. a Biden line or a B- Obama line. Man, he's still plagiarizing. They're going to start lining off whether they're red or blue. Cops, firefighters, first Don't responders, talk about cops, man. because teachers, the last, because they last have to balance the budget. And the thinking, founders were smart. Kind of they allowed the federal government a deficit spend to compensate for the United States of America. Oh, I want to talk deficit about the spending so wage, bad now. Mr. Vice President, mm-hmm. we're talking a lot about struggling small businesses yes. and business owners these days. Do you think this is the right time to ask them to raise the minimum wage? You, of course, support a $15 federal minimum wage. I do, because I think one of the things we're going to have to do is we're going to have... Uh, minimum wage. We should be federal minimum them wage out at least. now, those small businesses. You got one in six of them going under. They're not going to be able to make it back. They passed a, pre- a, a package that allows us to be able to call PPP. Money is supposed <laughs> to go to help them do everything from organize how they can deal with their businesses being open safely. So the one in one in every six smaller. businesses are not going to reopen. But we need to anyway. implement, need the implement a minimum the wage as well that would help as the, the business. Businesses that are struggling but reopening that will really help them will not help when they come back is not giving them any of the money that is economically okay, very quickly, but i want to get said we have reaction. to help our small businesses by raising the minimum wage. That's not oh helping. wow who I called think it that should be a state option <laughs> alabama yep. is different than new york new york is different from vermont every state is different it should be a state you, option you said very we recently, have to help it's very important we have to help our small businesses you, you how said, are you helping your small businesses when you're forcing wages what's going to happen and what's been proven to happen is when you do that these small businesses fire many of their employees you said very recently true, you would consider way. raising the federal minimum wage to 15 dollars an hour it. you said Say recently it. you would consider raising the federal minimum wage to 15 dollars an hour in, to an extent, but in what I really like, what I re- a in a second answer. administration, but not to a level that's going to put all these businesses out of business. It should be a state option. True. Look, well, yeah. I did one of my first videos I did since I started doing videos again was on the minimum wage and why a fifteen dollar minimum wage is a disaster for uh, average people. You can't do it. One job, be below poverty. People are making six, seven, eight bucks an hour. These first responders, we all clap for as they come down the street because they've allowed us to make it. What first What's responders happening? making minimum they wage? They deserve a minimum wage of $15. Is there a Anything first responder below making minimum wage? Below the you know? level. Yeah, seriously. No, they, not that they actually get, you get paid they don't pretty make, well. No, dude. Ambulance, ambulance like drivers and people that work um, in... Uh, well, just if you're an EMT, generally they don't they don't make crap, dude. They don't make anything. It's 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 uh, egregious. Four thousand kids. You've since reversed your zero tolerance policy, but the United States can't locate the parents of more than five hundred children. So how will these families ever be reunited? Our children are brought here by coyotes and lots of bad people, cartels. And they're brought here, and they used to use them to get into our country. We now have as strong a border as we've ever had. We're over 400 miles of brand new wall. You see the numbers, and we let people in, but they have to come in legally, and they come in through. But America. how will you reunite let me these just tell kids you, with their families? Let me just tell you, Mr. President. They built cages. You know, they used to say, "I built the cages," and then they had a picture in a certain newspaper, and it was a picture of these horrible cages, and they said, right, "Look at sis. the cages." President Trump built them, and then it was determined they were built in 2014. That was him. Do you have a plan to reunite the kids? Yes, we're working on it very, we're we're trying very hard. But a lot of these kids come out without the parents. They come over through cartels and through coyotes and through gangs. I've never read into this much, but how much of those kids are brought in and they can't, they just can't verify if the parents. 
came or with actually came parents. With That's right, Kevin. That's unfortunate. Yeah, and, and I might be wrong. I don't know. It's garbage. To begin with. Bay, real tough. We're really strong. But if you read those articles, I read far enough they to know not, it's not that during the anymore. Biden years, they're, they're not saying that them. they, they got didn't do the same thing. They said they don't and have the data. On it. And That's what they're saying. They don't have the data. Yeah. Yeah. But they have a verbal Let thing saying it was very rare. They That's did all it. they're saying. We changed the policy. Your response they to did that? It. We did not. They built the cages. Who built the cages, Joe? Let's talk about who built the cages. Who built the cages? What happened? Russia. Parents were ripped. Their kids were ripped from their arms and separated. And now they cannot find over 500. Who built the cages? Parents mm -hmm. and those kids are alone. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Kevin, it's are you taking notes? Because I'm not taking notes. No. And no. I should be. One of us should be. No. I'm trying to decipher what they Biden's are so actually well saying. taken yeah. care of. They're in facilities that were so clean. But some of them have haven't been reunited. Trump should have stuck with the who who built the cages thing right here. He should have said, who built the there it is. Let me ask about your immigration policy, Mr. Vice President. The Obama administration did fail to deliver. <laughs> Kristen Welker. Damn. And she oh, was holding, she was debate. holding Trump to the fire as too. Well as family yeah. and she kept saying, oh, how are they going to be reunited now? Be, like really good. Because we made a mistake. It made too. It took too long to get it right. It took too long to get it right. I'll be president of the United States, not vice president of the United States. <laughs> and the fact is, I've made it very clear. Did he just try to throw Obama under the bus? Yeah, yeah, it seems Congress, like he did. A pathway to citizenship for over 11 million undocumented people. And all of those and what's that going to incentivize? Those DACA kids, they're going to be immediately certified again to be able to stay in this country and put on a path to citizenship. The idea that they are being sent home by this guy and they want to do that is they've gone to a country they've never seen before. I can imagine you're five years old, your parents are taking you across, the, the Rio Grande River and it's, and, it's, and it's illegal. And you say, oh no, mom, leave me here. I'm not going to go with you. They've been here. Many of them are model citizens. Over 20,000 of them are first responders out there taking care of people during this crisis. We owe them. We owe them. President, Kristen, he had reaction. eight years to do what he said he was going to do. Ooh, good and one. I've changed we without having good a one. specific we got rid of catch and release. We got rid of a lot of horrible things that they put in and that they lived with. But he had eight years he was vice president. He did nothing except build cages to keep children. Oh, my God. Jimmy Christmas. If, in fact, you had a family came across and they were arrested, they, in fact, were given a date to show up for their hearing. They were released. And guess what? They showed up for a hearing. No, they this didn't. It was many? over 80% like do not show over 80% do not show up to those. I, I'm waiting for Biden to tell us how many. That's never happened before in America. That's never happened before in America. Well, mail in voting at a mass level has never happened before in America. You're fine with it. So. based on the following on the following premise. Why I didn't I put any water in that? That's just whiskey. Whew. They're sitting in squalor on the other side of the river. President Trump, your response, so 30 important. seconds, and then we'll move It on. just shows that he has no understanding of immigration or the laws. Catch and release is a disaster. A murderer would come wow. in. A rapist would come in. A very bad person would come in. We would take their name. We have to release them into our country. And then you say they come back. Less than 1% of the people come back. Go. Send ICE out and Border Patrol out to find them. We would say, come back in two years, three years. We're going to give you a court case. You need Perry Mason. We're going to give you a court case. <laughs> you say they come back. They don't come back, Joe. Dude. They never come back. Only the really... I hate safe. to say this, but those with the lowest IQ, they oh, might come back. Okay, President Trump, let's give deal. Vice President Biden a chance to respond, and then we're going to move on to the you next section. You don't know section. the law, Joe. Vice President the Biden, law. your response. No, the yeah, law. should have said that. Well, check, check it, it out. out. They don't come back. Check it out. All right, let's move on. But we don't have to, to worry about section. it because they terminated it, so we don't have to worry about let's it. Let's move right. on no? to the next section. And you section. have 525 people <laughs> and lost their parents. Go ahead. All right. Let's talk about our next section, which is race in America. Race. And I want to talk about the way they have that two. They have two left. They're, just, they're he, behind. He should just Part of that experience interject right here and say, I reject white supremacy. It happens regardless of class and income. Continue. 
Hold on, hold on. I want to hear the question. But to prepare their children for the chance that they could be targeted, including by the police, for no reason other than the color of their skin. Mr. Vice President. Wait, 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 wait. I want you to speak directly to these families. Do you understand why these parents fear for their children? I do. I do. You know, my daughter is. Reject the framing of this question. Yeah. She's all she's yeah, written a, a lot about. See what happens. It's I okay. Know. We'll see. Let's let's see what happens. We'll see what happens. So, and you know, uh, one of the reasons why I ended up working on the east side of Wilmington, Delaware, which is 90 percent African American, was to learn Lifeguard. more about what was going on. What I didn't, I never had to tell my daughter, if she's pulled over. Make sure she puts for a traffic stop, put both hands on top of the wheel and don't reach for the glove box because someone may shoot you. But a black parent, no matter how wealthy or how poor they are, has to teach their child when you're walking down the street, don't have a hoodie on when you go across the street, making sure that you, in fact, if you get uh, pulled over. Is just, this how you cross the street in a hoodie like yeah, this? Yeah whether you're a person making 300,000 child of a $300,000 a year person or someone who's on, on, on food stamps. The fact of the matter is there is institutional racism in America. And we have always said, we've never lived up to it, that we hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women are created equal. Well, guess what? You know the thing. We have never. You know the thing. We've always constantly been moving the needle further. <laughs> inclusion, not exclusion. <laughs> Okay. come along and says that's the end of that we're not going to do that anymore we have to provide for economic opportunity better education better health care better access to schooling better access to opportunity to borrow money to start businesses all, all government supplied because do, they are not mature enough yep. or developed enough to, to do, do those themselves. things that's exactly that right what so racist Freedom like dude. kids accumulating the ability to have wealth as well as it is to be free from violence President Trump, same question to you, and let me remind you of Free the question. Violence. I would like you to speak directly so to these families. Do you understand? Yeah, let's do it. He says. Fear for their children. Yes, I do. And again, he's been in government 47 years. He never did a thing except in 1994 when he did such the only harm kind to of the good black community. And they yeah, but. He called them super predators. And he said that. He said it, super predators. And they have never lived that down. 1994, your crime bill, the super predators. Nobody has done more for the black community than Donald Trump. And I like if to you tell he's third person. With the exception. J. Trump. Uh, but the exception of Abraham Lincoln, uh, nobody has done. Go. First Step Act. Justice reform. Obama and Joe didn't do it. I don't even think they tried because they had no chance at doing it. They might have wanted to do it, but if you had to see the arms I had to twist to get that done, it was not a pretty picture. And everybody knows it, including some very liberal people that cried in my office. They cried in the Oval Office. Two weeks later, they're out saying, gee, we have to defeat him. Criminal justice reform, prison reform, opportunity zones with Tim Scott, a great senator from South Carolina. He came in with this incredible idea for opportunity zones. It's one of the most successful programs. People don't talk about it. Tremendous investment is being made. Biggest beneficiary, the black and Hispanic communities, and then historically black colleges and universities. After three years of coming to the office, I love some of those guys, they were great. They came into the office, and they said, I said, what are you doing? After three years, I said, why do you keep coming back? Because we have no funding. I said, you don't have to come back every year. We have to come back because President Obama. He said this to Jason Whitlock today. It's mm -hmm. perfect. He did. Ten year long term funding. And I gave them more money than they asked for because they said, I think you need more. And I said, the only bad part about this is I may never see you again because I got very friendly with them and they like me and I like them. But I saved it. Colleges they cut him off for a second okay. there. You hear that? About both of your records, but your response to that, Vice President. My response to that is I never, ever said what he accused me of saying. The fact of the matter is in 2000, <laughs> After the crime bill had been in, 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 okay. in law for a while, this is a guy who said the problem with the crime bill, there's not enough people in jail. There's not enough people in jail. And go on my in website. 2000? 
already said it, not enough people. He talked about marauding gangs, young gangs, and the people who are going to maraud our cities. This is a guy who, in the Central Park Five, five innocent black kids, he continued to push for making sure that they got the death penalty. Yeah, except for they were innocent. Were guilty of what the crime of the crimes they were suggested. Look and talk about he. Granted, he did in fact let 20 people. He commuted 20 people sentences. We commuted over a thousand people sentences. Over a thousand. The very law he's talking about. Oh, a vice president can commute people's sentences. I didn't know that. Obama. And secondly, we're in a situation here where we, the federal prison system was reduced by 38,000 people under our administration. And one of these things we should be doing, there should be no, no minimum ma mandatories in the law. That's why I'm offering $20 billion to states to change their state laws to eliminate minimum mandatories and set up drug courts. No one should be going to jail because they have a drug talk, problem. Talk, they talk be going to your to uh, running mate there, Joe. Not to jail. Yep. Yeah, no kidding. <clears throat> Why didn't he do it four years ago? Why didn't you do that four years ago, even less than that? Why didn't you? I am you were vice president. You keep talking about all these things you're going to do and you're going to do this. But you were there just a short time ago and you guys did nothing. We did. You know, Joe, <laughs> because of you. I ran because of Barack Obama, because you did a poor job. If I thought you wow. did a good job, you would have never never run i ran because of you i'm looking at you now this is you're amazing i ran because of you all right vice president biden your response to that and then i do have some yeah. questions for both of you well, i tell you what i uh i hope he does look at me because what's happening here is you know who i am you know who he is you know his character you know my character you know our reputations for honor and this telling is some you. rehearsed crap oh, yeah. i hope trump Whenever says oh this is that rehearsed crap yeah Look at Trump, yeah, dude. He's like Character. looking down like, <laughs> all right, here it is. Our characters on the ballot. Look at us closely. Let me ask some follow-up. Please respond, and then we're going to have to This is true questions. about Russia, Ukraine, China, other countries, Iraq. If this is true, then he's a corrupt politician. Right. So don't give me the stuff about how you're this innocent baby. Joe, they're calling <laughs> you a corrupt politician. Nobody. Hey, President the Trump, I want to stay hell. on the issue. <laughs> I do want to stay on the issue of laptop race. poop from hell was on Babylon B's bingo for tonight. Oh, no way. <laughs> it really was. Is <laughs> a Russian plant. They have said that this is has all the Who? four Who five former out? heads of the CIA. Both parties say what he's saying is a bunch of garbage. Nobody believes it except the, his and his good friend, Rudy Gianni. You mean the laptop is Rudy? Rudy Galongly. That's exactly it. what is this that's where you're exactly going? what this is told. where he's going. The laptop that, right. is Russia. Yes. Russia, Gentlemen, Russia. I want to stay on the issue of race. You okay? have to be kidding. <laughs> you can go again with Russia. <laughs> the issue of race. Mr. President, you've described one. the Black Lives Matter movement as a symbol of hate. You've shared yeah. a video of a man chanting white power to millions of your supporters. You've said that black professional athletes exercise hey. their First Amendment rights. How's he going to answer this? You say to Americans who say that kind of language from a president is contributing to a climate of hate and racial strife. Well, you have to understand the first time I ever heard of Black Lives Matter, they were chanting pigs in a blanket, talking about police, pigs, pigs, talking about our police, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. I said, that's a horrible thing. And they were marching down the street. And that was my first uh, glimpse of Black Lives Matter. I thought it was a terrible thing. As far as uh, my relationships with all people. I think I have great relationships with all people. I am the least racist person in this room. Well, what do you say to Americans who are concerned by that rhetoric? I don't know. I mean, I don't videos. know what to say. I got criminal justice reform done and prison reform and opportunity zones. I took care of black colleges and universities. I don't know what to say. They can say anything. I mean, they can say anything. It's a very, it makes me sad. Because I am, I, I am the least racist person. I can't even see the audience because it's so dark. But I don't care who's in the audience. I'm the least racist person in this room. Okay, Vice President Biden, Abraham, let me ask you very quickly, and then I have a follow-up question for you. Please. Abraham Lincoln here is one of the most racist presidents we've had in modern history. He pours That's, fuel he is on significantly every less racist, racist than the guy you are every in office single with. one. Started yeah. off his campaign coming down the escalator. 
saying he's getting rid of those Mexican rapists. He's That's banned bullshit. Muslims because they're Muslims. He has moved around and made wow. everything what worse across joke. the board. He says to the, about the poor boys. Last time poor we were boys. on stage here, he said, I told him to stand down and stand ready. Come on. This guy stand is down, a dog whistle stuff. about as big as a foghorn. President Trump, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to respond, and then I have a follow-up. You know, he made a reference to Abraham Lincoln. Where did that come in? I mean, you said you're that, Abraham Lincoln. No, no, where did that? No, no. You said, I said not since Abraham Lincoln has anybody done what I've done for the black Joe's community. About to poop and I'm saying, I didn't say I'm Abraham Lincoln. I said not since Abraham Lincoln has anybody man, done what I've done for the black community. He's just smiling, and he's uncomfortable. Trump going to say, are you even paying attention? Nothing other than the crime bill. Which put oh God th tens of thousands of black men mostly in jail. All right, let me, you know let, me not, let me they ask remember Vice it President because Biden if you look at what's happening with the voting right now, let me ask they Vice remember President that Biden you treated them about, very, very badly. The, the, Just take a look at what's happening out there. Vice President Biden, let me give you a chance to respond within this context. Crime okay. bills that you supported in the 80s and 90s contributed to the incarceration of. <laughs> Young black men who had small amounts of drugs in their possession. They are sons, they are brothers, their fathers, their uncles, whose families are still to this day, some of them suffering the consequences. So speak to those families. Why should they vote for you? One of the things is that in the 80s, we passed 100 percent, all 100 senators voted for it, a bill on drugs and how to deal with drugs. It was a mistake. I've been trying to change the sense and particularly the portion on cocaine. That's why I've been arguing that, in fact, we should not send anyone to jail for this is crazy, a dude. pure drug. We're going to have a hell of a conversation going after this. Across the board. That's what we should be spending money. That's why I set up drug courts, which were never funded by our Republican friends. They should not why? be going to jail Crime's for crime. a drug or an alcohol problem. They should be going into yes. treatment. Treatment. That's what we've been trying to do. That's what I'm going to get done because I think maybe the American what, people. What about getting hit by a drunk driver? In fact, it was a mistake. Makes that person those like eligible for treatment. The drug, but they like, I know, crime's right? a crime. There are, we Why have objective standards it for See, these things. It's all talk, no, no that's, that's a great point, Kevin. Why didn't he get it done? That's well, that's a quest for cosmic do. justice, Thomas president. Soul. You were vice you can't, president along can't with lower Obama the sentence as your of president, your leader, for eight years. Why didn't you get it done? You had eight years to get it done. Now you're saying you're going to get it done because you're all talk and no action, Jim. We got this a lot of it done. We released 38,000. Wow. You didn't get anything done. Oh, my gosh. We have, there were over a thousand people who were given clemency. We have made, in fact, we're the ones that put in the legislation saying we could look at pattern and practice of police departments and what they were doing. Look how at they, how yeah. flustered Biden is. So they, they, they began, began, the, process. began the process for we lost an patterns election. That's in the police department, yet we're at the point we're at now. And change his terrible policy. I just asked, and then we're I just asked on one question. Change. Why didn't you do it in the eight years, a short time ago, why didn't you do it? You just said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. You put tens because of thousands of mostly black young men in prison. Now you're saying you're going to get you're going to undo that. Why didn't you get it done? You had eight years with Obama. You know why, Joe? Because you're all talk and no action. All right, Vice President because Biden, and then we're going to move on to the next section. We had a Republican Congress. Okay. What's the answer? Well, you okay. Gotta talk, you got to talk him into it, Joe. Sometimes All right. You got to talk him into it. We're going to move on to our next you know, section. Like I did with criminal justice state. reform. Oh, yeah. okay. I had talked Democrats into it. Gentlemen, you we're, did. we're, we're running out of done. time, so we got to get on to okay. climate change, please. You both have very different. Can I get on to climate change? Biden just checked his watch. What? <laughs> when does my Percocet wear off? new jobs for each of you how would you both combat climate change and support job growth at the same time starting with you president trump you shoot have two minutes in uninterrupted leg. so uh, shoot the sun in the leg we have so many different programs i do love the environment but what i want is the cleanest crystal clear water the cleanest air we have the best lowest number in carbon emissions, which is a big standard that I notice Obama goes with all the time. Not Joe. I haven't heard Joe use the term because I'm not sure he knows what it represents or means, but I have heard Obama <laughs> use it. <laughs> 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 
Under uh, this administration, we are working so well with industry. But here's what we can't do. Oh, Look my God, it. dude. It is. Look at <laughs> Russia. Look at India. It's filthy. The, the, air is filthy. filthy. the Paris Accord, I took us out because we were going to have to spend trillions oh of dollars. God. And we were treated very oh, I'm, I'm done. Can service. They were going to take away our businesses. I will not sacrifice tens of millions of jobs, thousands and thousands of companies because of the Paris Accord. It was so unfair. China doesn't kick in until 2030. Russia goes back to a low standard. And this is we the best thing ever. In right away, it would have been. It would have been. It would have destroyed our businesses. So, you ready? We have done an incredible job environmentally. We have the cleanest air, the cleanest water, and the best carbon emission standards that we've seen in many, many. <laughs> years. Vice President, and we Biden. haven't destroyed our industry. <laughs> Vice President Biden, two minutes to you, uninterrupted. Climate change and climate warming, the global warming, is an existential threat to humanity. Same thing, technically. We have a moral obligation to deal with it. And we're told by all the leading scientists in the world, we don't have much time. We're going to pass the point of no return within the next eight to ten years. Happen like the Biden 60s. looks so rehearsed and rigid and... You know, that I mean, the, the Trump hitting him on those politician lines and framing it like that. I, he needs to keep perfect. going back to that. Yeah. We'll put us in a position. Helps. Listen to Biden's answer is just suck every ass time he looks at the camera, like every that. time he looks at the camera like that, he's got to be like, What are you doing, man? I'm over here. As well as labor, the people worried about jobs to support my climate plan. Because what it does, it will create millions of new good paying jobs. We're going to invest in, for example, 500,000, 50,000, excuse me, 50,000 charging stations on our highways so that we can own the electric car market of the future. In the meantime, China is doing that. We're going to be yeah, in a position Yeah, but electricity where we're going comes to from to something. That we're going to take. Yeah, he like doesn't. We've he taken it from know. the Thunder Gods, or what's happening here? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh retrofit them so they don't leak as much energy, saving hundreds of millions of barrels of oil in the process. <laughs> significant number of jobs. <laughs> Trump making these Government faces, jobs, man. man. He's making these like, yeah. his yeah. eyebrows are all over the place. Take a drink every time Trump's eyebrows go up like that. <laughs> Our jobs are at stake. That's what's happening. And what right now, by the way, Wall Street firms indicated that my plan, my my plan will, in fact, create 18.6 million jobs, 7 million more than his. This is from Wall Government. Street. Government. Where are the and jobs think, coming from, dude? One, you think Trump will make the statement of like, oh, Wall Street. So you're saying Wall Street likes you, likes your plan? Is that what you're saying? President Trump here today came out and said very strongly, $6,500 will be taken away from families under his plan, that his plan is an economic disaster. If you look at what he wants to do, you know, the if you look at his plan, Not, his environmental plan, you know who developed it? AOC plus three. They know nothing about the climate. <laughs> uh -huh. She's got a good line of snuff, but she knows nothing about the climate. And they're all hopping through hoops for AOC plus three. Look, their real plan costs $100 trillion. If we had the best year in the history of our country for 100 years, we would not even come close to a number like that. Yeah. When Have he you ever heard of AOC plus three? I've never heard of that because phrase they want to make bigger windows. That's, in he's, that's his way. That he's rebranding the squad, dude. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I AOC understand what Ayanna it means. Presley, yeah. I know uh, that. Ilhan Omar and uh, I forgot what the other one's name is. I, I know, people. I know them. I just didn't, I've never heard of anyone oh. refer it to AOC. AO, yeah, I don't even know how it could be good AOC politically. They want to spend a hundred. I don't even know how it could be good politically. He's trying to say it was sick. It's a hundred trillion dollars. Problem. They want to knock down buildings and build new buildings with little, tiny, small windows. I mean, and many other things. Okay. And many other things. Let me have the vice president it respond. And we're crazy. running out of time, and we have a lot and more questions to get to. So let's hear from the vice president. I have a number more questions. I don't know where he comes from. I don't know where he comes up with these numbers. A hundred trillion dollars. Give me a break. This plan was, um, this is plans endorsed by every major, every major environmental group and every labor Duh. group. Oh, labor. every, ma wow. Every environmental group? Whoa. Everyone is going to get paid under this plan. And they know their good Agreed jobs in getting it. us there. And by the way, the fastest growing industry in America are, is, is, is the electric 
the, no, no, uh, no. Excuse me, Who's uh, the fast growing energy, industry that is not funded wind. by the government? He thinks wind causes cancer. Yep. Wind is the fastest growing jobs, and they pay good prevailing wages, 45, 50 by bucks an hour. Dude. We can grow and we can be cleaner if we go It doesn't provide anything to the economy. The it I just propose. recycles dollars. President Trump, inefficient. Please yeah. respond. We are energy independent for the first time. We don't need all of these countries that we had to fight war over because we needed their energy. We are energy independent. I know more about wind than you do. Oh, it's extremely it's, expensive. Could turn that Kills all the birds. Good it's very intermittent. Kills all the birds. It's got a lot of problems. And they happen to make the windmills I'll in, take Bur- it. in China. And the fumes coming up, if you're a believer in carbon emission, <laughs> the fumes coming up to make, make these massive windmills is more than anything that we're talking about with natural gas, which is very clean. One other thing. Find me a scientist solar. Says that. I love solar, but solar doesn't quite have it yet. It's not powerful in it yet to, it's not it's to not really powerful. run it's our big, beautiful factories that we need. The energy it creates. With the world. That's what he's saying. No, that's right. Yeah. But you know what we'll do? We're going to have the greatest economy in the world. But if you want to kill the economy, right. get rid of your oil industry. You want and and what about fracking? All right, now, let me now let me have, have let me allow Vice yeah. President I Biden to respond. I have never said I oppose fracking. You, you said, said it, it several Biden times. Took the bait. You said it several times. Website. I'll put it on. Put it on the website. The fact of the matter is, Showed he's it flat lying. <laughs> Would you rule out banning fracking? I do rule out banning fracking because the answer we need. We need other uh, industries uh, to transition to get to cringy. only a complete zero emissions by 2025. What I will Shitty do answer. Time is make sure that we can capture the emissions from the fracking, capture the emissions from gas. Fart bags on cows. We can do that, and we can do that by investing money in to transition to that. I Eric's like- drunk. He's saying, talking about eating birds. In the chat. Eric, drink some water. Is he on YouTube? YouTube. I can't. I can't see the YouTube. Sis says not eagles. I also agree. Because his party is totally against fracking on federal land. I said no fracking. You said no. You didn't. Let me ask this final question in this section, and then I want to move on to our final section. President Trump, people of color are much more likely to live near oil refineries and chemical plants. In Texas, there are families who worry that's the, the last question are making them sick. Your administration has rolled back regulations on these kinds of facilities. Why should these families give you another four years in office? Uh, the families that we're talking about are employed heavily and they're making a lot of money, more money than they've ever made. If you look at the kind of numbers that we produce for Hispanic, for black, for Asian, It's nine times greater the percentage gain than it was under in three years than it was under eight years of the two of them, to put it nicely. Nine times more. The Biden moment there. Now, yep. Guy from Scranton. But they're making a tremendous amount of money economically. We saved it. And I saved it again a number of months ago when oil was crashing because of the pandemic. We saved it. We got, say what you want about relationship, we got Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Russia to cut back way back. We saved our oil (laughs) industry. And now it's very, very You're fine, man. Gasoline. Remember Vice that. President Biden, your response, and then we're going to have a final question for both of you. My response is that those people live on what they call fence lines. He doesn't understand this. They live near chemical plants that, in fact, pollute chemical plants and oil plants and refineries that pollute. I used to live I'm near. Sorry, who is in control of Flint, Michigan? And all wait, the wait, who is in control of Flint? Was it Republicans or is it an entirely Democrat run city? Tell me more about fence lines, Joe. To drive me to school, turn in the windshield, wherever there'd be an oil slick in the window. That's why so oh, many that people never in my happened. state 100%. were dying and getting cancer. Yeah, the fact that shit. the frontline communities, it doesn't matter what yeah. you're paying, it doesn't matter how you keep them safe. <laughs> What do you do? And you impose restrictions on the pollutions that it, the pollutants coming out of those fence line communities. Okay, I have one final would question. Would he close it down falls, the oil industry? It falls. Or would you close it down falls. the oil industry? By the way, I would transition from the oil industry, yes. Oh, I would that's transition. a big statement. That's it is a big statement. That's a big because statement. I would stop. Why would you do that? Because the oil oh, industry. Oh, Welker is taking it. Significantly. Oh, I see. Here's the deal. But that's a big statement. That. Well, if you let me finish the statement, because it has to be replaced by renewable energy over time. 
over time. And I'd stop giving to the oil industry, I'd stop giving them federal subsidies. He won't give federal subsidies. Stop giving to the, federal subsidies to, gas, to everyone. Uh, excuse me, to the. Yeah, seriously. When you understand yeah. that's Why naturally how it goes. Oil industry. We actually do. It's right. a consumer so producer we, relationship. If the consumers want, want clean energy, business, the producers will make it. Okay. Because we basically, because there's a need. Is he is going to destroy the oil industry. Okay. Will you remember that Texas? Will you okay. remember that Pennsylvania, Oklahoma? Vice President Biden, let me give you 10 seconds to respond, and then I have to get to the final question. Vice President Biden. He takes everything out of context, but the point is, oh, look, come on. we have to Someone move from the toward. Democratic Party Fine people. say that. Fine people there, Biden, he takes everything out of context. Piece of crap. Energy production by 2050 totally. All right. One is he going to get China to do it? No, we're finished with is this. Is he we going to, to get China to, to do it? We have to move on to our rejoin final question. I'm going to rejoin Paris Accord and make oh. China abide by what they agreed to. All right. How this are you going to make that happen, Joe? Gentlemen, and this first question Ridiculous. does go to you, President Trump. Imagine this is your inauguration day. What will you say in your address to, America, to Americans who did not vote for you? You'll each have hmm. one minute, starting with question. you, Mr. We have to make a country totally successful as it was prior to the plague coming in from China. Now we're rebuilding it and we're doing record numbers, 11.4 million jobs in a short period of time, et cetera. But I will tell you, go back. Before the plague came in, just before, I was getting calls from people that were not normally people that would call me. They wanted to get together. We had the best black unemployment numbers in the history of our country, Hispanic, women, Asian, People with diplomas, with no diplomas, MIT graduates, number one in the class, everybody had the best numbers. And you know what? The other side wanted to get together. They wanted to unify. Success is going to bring us together. We are on the road to success. But I'm cutting taxes, and he wants to raise everybody's taxes, and he wants to put new regulations on everything. He will kill it. If he gets in, you will have a depression, the likes of which you've never seen. Your 401ks will go to hell, and it'll be a very, very sad day for this country. All right. Vice President Biden, same question to you. What will you say during your inaugural address to Americans who up. did not vote for you? I will say Trump should have said something about how you know, something unifying, I think, a little more. Yeah, he didn't like answer what the Biden question. Just said, I'm going to make sure yeah. that you're represented. I'm going to give you hope. We're going to move. We're going to choose science over fiction. We're going to choose hope over fear. We're going to choose to move. Is that rehearsed political bullcrap? Hope over fear. Have you listened to your debate to make performance? Better. Yeah, we no kidding. Economy. We can deal with the systemic racism, and at the same time, we can make sure that our system is being run and moved and motivated by clean energy, creating millions of new jobs. And that's the Funded fact. By that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to say, as I said at the beginning, what is on the ballot here is the character of this country. Decency. Yeah, that's another honor, Obama statement. Treating people with dignity, making sure that everyone has an even chance. And I'm going to make sure you get that. You haven't been getting it the last four years. All right, I want to thank you both for a very robust hour and a half, a fantastic debate. Really appreciate she it. President Trump, job. former Vice President Joe Biden, thank you to Belmont University for hosting us tonight. And most importantly, thank you to those watching tonight. Election Day is November 3rd. Don't forget to vote. Thank you, everyone, and have a great night. Thank you. There you have it, second. All right. Of this 2020 election. Do you want me to keep it silent or? Mute it completely. Shut it off, man. Just uh, turn that off and, yep, turn that off. Uh, and let's let's go over to. Where are you? I think I accidentally. Here we go. Say okay. again. Um, Mrs. You're Biden's not screen got... sharing, are you? No, I'm not. I'm out. See me right. Say, uh, yeah, I'm uh, checking Mrs. Biden's YouTube, got like all. a floral, floral design on her dress and the same exact fabric made on her, her face mask. And it's really throwing me off. I think it's like a camouflage. It's a weird so. thing to get distracted by. So, uh, where are you at on your, uh, whiskey consumption? Because I, I am glad that this is only 35%. I'll put it that way. Say I'm out of the whisk, the uh, whistle pig. I'm out of the Jameson. And I moved to the Cor Corbell Extra Smooth, which is like, I'm pretty sure this is like 90% sugar because it tastes basically like a, yes. a caramel syrup. That's and what Brandy it's does. It's really good.
But uh, <laughs> yeah, how are you doing in your drink? Uh, I'm on my fourth or fifth one. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm typing in the chat, telling people to submit questions and comments if they have them. Uh, Kevin, while I'm doing that, why don't you go ahead and give us your impressions and then we can go down. I did jot some notes down. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't know. Everyone have... is uncharacteristic tonight, right? So <laughs> I actually took some notes. Yes. So, so let's hear it. You know, I mentioned this a little bit uh, during the debate. You know, let's try to take a, an objective standard from from kind of more academic debate metrics you know, who won, who lost, who scored more points. Unlike the first debate, I really wasn't explicitly keeping points, but uh, in terms of body language and uh, demeanor and the ability to control the substance, I think, I think Trump knocked it out of the park. He did, he did a pretty good job. Really, really good job. You know, he was more Pence than he was Trump uh, for this debate, which is good. I don't know if it's because you learned it. I, I think the the silencing the mics, or at least the threatening to silence the mics, went to his advantage. Although I did notice that his mic got silenced just about every time Biden talked, and Biden's didn't. Um, yeah. But, but it, it, you know, he he was much more well behaved. Uh, he came off as a, a, a guy that you know your your everyday uh, I don't like to say modern family maybe you know the the conservatives who were kind of turned off by his uh, attitude and, and what he said and did in the first debate. I think he may have won them over, at least reassured them that he can act more presidential, you know, during this debate, but this isn't an academic debate. It's a political debate. You know, our, our two major questions here would be, did he win over anyone in the middle? And did, did Trump beat his standard? Did he beat the bar that was set for him? And then also, did Biden beat the bar that was set for him? Because these are way, these are two different levels. These are not the same thing. And, you know, I think it's important to note that. I think Trump well exceeded his expectations. I think he did a pretty good job. I think he won some middle support. I think he did, he did a good job. I don't think Biden fell under the bar that was set for him. And, you know, that, that's a bit of a commentary on the bar that was set for him in the first place. Just don't say anything incredibly stupid. You know, you can get away with a few things here and there. I but the, strongly and i will tell you why when, so when tell me turn. why the things he said that were stupid that aren't just going to be very easily spun by the media like i don't think he said anything that's going to get him in hot water that's not the part i disagree with here's the part i disagree with that he um met the standard that was set for him so here's what i said in my pre-debate analysis okay <clears throat> The, the appeal of Joe Biden is that people perceive him as a known entity. And the more he doesn't answer questions and doesn't tell you what to expect or confirm even your uh, expectations of what to expect, the more he doesn't do that, the more he appears like an unknown entity. That's why the not answering the question on packing the courts hurts him. It really does because it moves him from known entity into unknown entity territory. That's what I mean. So whenever I did my pre-debate analysis, I said that the standard for Trump was demeanor. The standard was, does he appear brash? Is he belligerent? Is he speaking over people? Is he going crazy like he did in the first debate? That's the standard. It's demeanor. And the standard for Biden to win, what people are looking for is answers is clarity, is I want you to tell me that I'm right in thinking that you're a known entity. So the question that was asked for either of them, I think for Trump was, is your demeanor, like, are you, are you the person that I think you are? Or are you capable of, of controlling yourself, of, of moderating? Yes. With Biden, it's, are you what I think you are in terms of a known entity? Are you going to answer these questions? Are you going to pack the court? Are you going to end the filibuster? Did Hunter profit off your name? Because the more he doesn't answer those, the more he shows that he's an unknown entity. And that's really different territory than what got him here in the first place. So I think that Biden did not meet the bar because the bar was, do you present as a known entity to me? I don't think he did that because he didn't answer questions. He did not like um, 
alleviate anyone's concerns when it came to those topics or anything like that. Does that make sense? So I don't think he did, but, but, but that's the bar. That's what I would use as the metric there. Would you say for Biden out of all the questions you had from coming into the bait, were there any questions added on to it? Because I agree with you there that there, that what do you mean? The court packing, they didn't even talk about it. Right. So that's something that's still a question, but not like an additional question. Right. Um, like what in this debate would you think would have him fall again? Very, very low bar. We're talking about here. We're not talking about exceeding anything. He, I, to me, he hit the bar, but what in this debate would bring you? Okay. I have a question about this. Maybe that, you know, the Russian money that people who weren't really informed about it. Um, although I think he needed to give a bit more substance on it. I think, um, you know, I mean, I don't even know if he called Hunter out by name, which actually might've been a good debate strategy. You know, it, uh, to not, you know, call out his drug addicted son, because it's pretty easy to turn that around saying, oh, I'm sorry, my son's got problems, but we're working and we're, we're helping him way through it. And you know that Biden had that response prepared. And I think Trump kind of not going into that trap was good on him. But like what what additional questions, what 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 made Biden a, a more unknown quantity than he was coming in the debate? Because to me, like I agree with you, but I don't think I don't think he lost much on the unknown quantity part he didn't answer the questions he has not answered in the past and i don't know if he brought any more question marks is what i'm saying you kind of get what i mean i do i'm sorry i'm reading the chat so to Mm -hmm. to make sure i understand your question um so your question is what like what was different like what people what might have made him seem more like a question mark after this debate is that your question yeah, because you're saying he he's he the people are comfortable with him because he's a known quantity, correct? I'm saying people were comfortable with him. Mm-hmm. And I think this race is tightening because and and what I said in my pre-debate analysis was that since the Supreme Court stuff and the more we get Biden and also Harris not answering this question, his was a return to normalcy. Normalcy is synonymous with expectations. I know what to expect from this, or at least I have an expect, like I have a picture in my mind, even if that's not correct. And Trump played that beautifully by bringing up the eight years. You cannot play return back to normalcy when you were supposedly the normal before. Yeah. And you didn't knew you can't. And you you basically argued against your own points. Like it it was a bad way to bring it up. I agree. So, but to what we're talking about here, the what I'm saying is, is that he represented for people a return to normalcy. Well, the more the spotlight has been on Biden, the more it's just been him talking and not answering questions. So I think that going into this, I, I think that this race has been tightening since the Supreme Court stuff. OK, yes. And people are looking for him to answer questions. He didn't answer any of them. I was shocked because one of the topics said race and violence in our cities. She didn't ask that question. Okay. So that's a problem for, for Trump really, because she didn't ask him, do you condemn Antifa? All right. She did a good job. All right. And so that's not really what I'm trying to talk about. My point is, is that Biden has become less of a known entity the less he's been willing to answer specific questions in this debate. What I said was people were looking for him to answer specific questions about court packing, about the filibuster and about Hunter Biden. Joe Biden did not give a, any substantive answers. He, there was a few where he said, I haven't taken a penny from Ukraine or whatever. That's not the same as have I profited. So those are different questions. Has there been something held in trust for me? You know, is there a, you know, have, have I in some ways profited, you know, through the way that money filters, you know, through the laundering process, but Mm -hmm. fair enough. So that is it. That is an answer. Okay. I'm going to give credit where credit's due. My point is, is that the more people uh, see Joe Biden and look at him and go, well, I guess he didn't answer that. Well, I guess I don't know what he'll do here. Well, maybe he'll change this fundamentally. I thought we were going to go back to what we had back in 2014. What are you, what are you talking about? What, you know, Wait, we're going to make all these structural changes. So that's what I mean, is that 
he going into this, he he needed to do that is what I'm saying. Um, so I don't really know how else to say it other than that. But I mm-hmm. think that because of that, Biden lost this debate. And I think not just lost it a little bit. I think he lost it a lot because so let's say you have a debate where Biden is calm and just does his Biden thing. So they both needed to do something different. Trump just needed to be calm and give the same answers on policy. Biden needed to be calm and give answers, period. With both of them calm, Trump just being Trump, but while calm and tempered and even a little restrained. Because I think you're right. The bar was set low for both of them. Like, think about it like this. The bar for Trump with a white supremacist question is, do you condemn white supremacists? Yeah, I condemn white supremacists. Like, so the, the bar set low. For Biden, it's, no, I'm not going to pack the Supreme Court. But how did it impact Trump whenever he didn't give the answer that people wanted on that question? It's, though, it's, that really is quite similar for Biden with those things. Um, so the bar was set low. If they're both calm and Trump does his thing and Biden continues to do his thing, because Biden's always been calm. Biden gave the same debate performance here as he gave in the first debate, as he gave in the town hall and the other town hall, right? Biden actually did not have a really substantively different performance here than he did. Other other, other than because Trump gave more substance, he was more visibly flustered, I think. That's well, the right. Fir- the that's first right. Debate, I don't think they was, prepped yeah. for yeah. disciplined Trump. I don't think they prepped for that. So I, so I think that's right. <laughs> we didn't prep for that, so to be fair, yeah. Fair, um, yeah, I know. <laughs> someone said in, the, in our chat something about taking shots or something, and I said, I'm drunk on pleasant surprise. Like I'm yeah, good enough. Yeah, yeah. But but anyway, yeah. but my point is is that is that he had things that he needed to do. Now, of course, it's going to be spun. Of course, the media is going to do this and all this other stuff. So that's fine. But this did matter, and it did matter to some people. And to those that it mattered to, they're going to look at that and go, Oh, the thing that Trump needed to do was the demeanor stuff. He nailed it. He did fine. Mm-hmm. Biden needed to give clear answers. How did he do? No, none whatsoever. Mm. That moderator, we'll talk about her in a minute because I think we need to specifically talk about her at some point. But I don't know if what I just yes. said kind of answers your question um, yeah, yeah. at all. Yeah, I think we're just, uh, I guess, framing the question a bit differently. Um, you know, there are these questions coming in. I do think it is a tightening race, and I think it's an important point. Um, but, uh, you know, to me, again, he didn't answer what he didn't answer. The only question out of those main three that you brought up that he was even questioned on secondarily, I guess, was Hunter Biden, which he was never directly asked that question. But when it came to court packing or the filibuster, he wasn't even asked those at all that I can remember, um, which I'm surprised he Trump, wasn't. He wasn't Trump didn't, didn't bring it up. So, you know, he's not going to lose ground there, but um when it comes to the standards, you know, I, I, I don't I don't necessarily think that Trump had a lower bar necessarily when it came to like a low standard of success when it came to here, because not only does he have to show demeanor, he does have to show substance because it's expected of him. You know, when one lacks substance, the other needs to kind of fill the void. And I think that's an expectation of Trump is not only to show demeanor, but to show substance, because just kind of like we talked before um, with, uh, you know, the, the when when something like uh, critical theory moves from theory to all of a sudden absolute fact, that is what Trump has to deal with. Biden doesn't have to prove any substance because what his position is, is taken as absolute fact because it's pushed by the media where Trump actually has to have a substantive argument argument against it. And that's why he needs to maintain substance and demeanor at the same time. I think he did a pretty good job balancing that. There's a couple openings that I saw Biden had that he just didn't take. And, and that one of the problems is, is debate prep. But also when you, when all you do is talking points, all you do is talking points. You at least need to be really good at talking points and, and talking points, although I hate them because they're just surface level arguments and you're not arguing against anyone, but the kind of imaginary man you're making in your head. What you have to do if you do talking points is do what Trump does, where you, you have to embellish. You have to be a showman when you're, when you're doing talking points. And Trump is really, really good at that. You know, he have these things prepared and he's able to kind of provide almost entertainment around it. When Joe Biden looks straight at the camera and starts talking about you, you were on the dinner table and, and Trump called him out for it. It's like, you're just a, you're a politician speaking to the camera and you know, these prepared talking points and everyone knows that you're saying a whole lot of nothing and people are sick of it. 
That's one of the reasons Trump got brought in is because he's yep. he's not a politician. He doesn't talk like a politician. He's a brash guy and whatever. Like I don't I don't. And as a conservative who who gets kind of compared to what I would call the Lincoln Project type conservatives who talk about this demeanor and love Mitt Romney because he seems like a really stand up guy. OK, you can be a stand up guy, seems but like a piece of shit, dude. I, but but the point is, I, I want principle. I, I want actually you to push these principles, push policies that based on principle and not to show me your stand up guy. Yet I'm going to sell my gr- own grandma out for a, you know, a five minute spot on CNN. Like you have to have mm. backbone and the guy has backbone and you can tell. And also a big thing on Biden, something I was going to mention uh, during the stream. Uh, like everyone knows this guy who talks tough. Like, do you have a friend who talks tough and you just like, no, it's like, yeah, you didn't say that to that guy. Like he talked to a guy in a bar, hit on his chick, and all of a sudden he's trying to pick a fight with them and saying, oh, let's go outside. And you know he's not going to do a damn thing. Yes. Like, like that's yeah, Biden. We all have that those friends. That is Biden. That's Biden. Dude talks a big game. And you know when he's in these closed-door meetings with China or, or uh, uh, Russia, you know he's not talking a big game. You know it for a fact because he's not been successful in any foreign policy ever. So it's like you got a guy talking a big game and you got a, guy, a trash talker like Trump, a guy who just so, spits shit. I mean, that's who you want when negotiating, especially with a hostile foreign adversary. What I've seen. So in working in education, I've seen that you see lots of from the top um, policies and ideas and all these things come down that sound really great. And but when it comes to actually enforcing them, there's no teeth. There's no teeth to actually enforce them. That's what I heard whenever I heard Biden talk about these things, whether it's the mask stuff or the Paris Climate Accords and all this other stuff. It's like, we're really going to want you to do that, doggone it. Okay. Like, what is, how is your desire for a thing to happen tethered to it actually happening without any type of force or incentive or disincentive? Because you're going to try harder. That's tied why. to it. Exactly. Yeah, Biden's going to try hard. Got a plan. He's going to put all of that energy he has in his 78-year-old husk behind trying harder. My ass. Anyway, my point is, is that that's what I get from these policies is like I had this thing happen the, uh, the other day where a friend of mine posted a thing about um, it was a pretty close to a socialist talking about how, you know, a lot of people on the right say any policy they disagree with is socialist and communist and how that's ridiculous. And I, I put a comment on it and where I was saying, you know, I said, what, what's ironic here is um, that I disagree with every bit of substance in this video, you know, from an ideological standpoint, from a factual standpoint, so on and so forth, except for the premise, which is, yeah, if you label everything you say as socialist, then that's that's not productive. Just like how the the left says everything is racist or fascist or whatever, that's not productive. You can't just you can't live out in the hyperbole. You have to actually bring things back down to earth. And and either on either side of it, at some point, uh, the the main thing I took from that was maybe I was like, wait, how did I, how the hell did I even think about that in the first place? But what made me think about that was this, the, the thought I had whenever I read my friend's reply to that was. Um, disagreeing with how you get something done disagreeing with the means is not the same as disagreeing with the ends and that's what we see a lot of times here is you know joe biden will say well this is what i would ask him and doggone it we want that you know and and a realist might say okay but you know how would you get that done we might agree that that needs to happen we agree we agree in the thing that we would like to see happen well, but we understand that there are limits to how you would get that done in a free society. And maybe we disagree on how much freedom we want people to have or how much freedom we want states to have. And that's OK. And we can have that conversation. But we have to at least acknowledge that disagreeing with the means in which something gets done is not the same as disagreeing with the underlying goal in either side of it. Like hmm. that, that is that seems to be so much of a substantive difference between the left and the right is that the left says, if you disagree with my way of getting something done, you must disagree with the goal. Yeah. And the right says, no, no, no. I just, well, that's the thing. Just we, we, with we, the way you we, want to get that done. We mostly all agree on the ends to these things. Mostly all. And that comes down to the argument when you, when you look at the worldview between evil and stupid, right? 
the stupid is not a good starting uh, condition that a lot of uh, conservatives or right-leaning people will attribute to left-wing people is like, oh, you're just doing because you're ignorant. That's not a good starting position, but it doesn't say that your ends, like I want, I want less uh, racial disparities, right? I don't, I, I don't say you're evil for thinking that, but I think the, your means to doing so is often very stupid, very ignorant. But when you go the other way around and you accuse them of evil, you have to accuse to not only say the means to get there are evil, but the ends that you intend to get are evil. It was like something AOC started passing around like a meme or something like that when she first got elected and went into office was like when the kids in cages, it was like a, a meme saying they do it because they, they do it for like the pain. They do it for making people feel bad. Like that's, that's their intentions. They want immigrants to feel bad. They want immigrants. That's insane. Something, something about that. It was not exact, exact, that exact language, but basically the thing is like the whole point they're implementing these policies is because they want these people to suffer. Like suffering is the point. That's, that's, and and it's so egregious and evil. And it's like, no, we we have different means. The, the, the best way to create economic, uh, to eliminate economic disparities between classes is communism that that actually is a very efficient tool to do so now you're not Man, defining you the ends you're not defining the ends like you if they're all living up here is a difference in all living down there equally right but but normally from the right-leaning perspective we say okay you can accomplish it that way other than it's you're you're going to kill a lot of people on the way there and you're not going to like the end result and I think that's important when it comes to substance. And normally, you know, it's a good thing if Trump, it's, it's good Trump when he can express his way to, you know, he, he even gave uh, Biden's like, you know, Biden didn't believe in this stuff when I, I believe it came to China, uh, the coronavirus. He's like, it's not my fault. It's not Joe's fault. You know, we, we both want the same thing. We both want healthy Americans who can push back, you know, push past the coronavirus. And when you distill it down to, I wanted over 200 thousand people to die compared to at least i tried and your Mm. miraculous plan would have just saved us all i mean it makes me think back to kendy who always talks about policy it's like oh it's the policy that will save us it's like you you need to define policy you can't just use this overarching term and say it's going to save us all it's that is the definition of an empty talking point to say i have the policy or i have the plan to do it no, no, no. You got to describe your plan. And when he describes his plan, exactly the same moves Trump made. Exactly yeah. the same moves Trump made. That's that uh, plagiarism line. Um, so I I'm, I asked people in the chat, both on Locals and on YouTube, if they had any questions or comments. And uh, Anya had a good question. She said, what do we predict the headlines will be uh, as a result of this, she said tomorrow, but you know, there'll be some tonight and so on and so forth. But what do we think the headlines will be? I think it's a great question. You know, we could probably generally guess the direction those headlines will be, but Kevin, what do you think? Um, you know, it depends. We got to separate what you call legacy media and, and, uh, I guess more down the line media, uh, legacy media, I think is going to, to pull out a few talking points that Trump made, uh, maybe spin them a little bit. I do think there was some in there that, uh, or a bit missteps politically, politically meaning that substantively it's not bad, but it can be easily spun. There's holes there that expose you to to easy spin in the media. And I think they might take advantage of some of that. And uh, although Trump, in my opinion, although my opinion doesn't mean anything to these people, uh, he respectfully pushed back against the moderator when he needed more time to explain his ideas, just like Pence did. They're going to accuse him of going after a woman. Uh, especially a woman of color. So, you know, we know that's going to be a headline. Um, you think so? I, I don't think he did a bad job, but I also think Pence didn't do a bad job of pushing back against uh, uh, Susan, forgot her name, um, but they still spun it that way. Wasn't Susan, it was Savannah Guth. Oh, no, it was Susan. You're no, right, no, you're right, Susan right, something, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, sorry. So so I think Legacy Media is obviously going to spin this in a way uh, to to try to hurt him. Um to me, I'm more interested. What are the fact checkers going to come out with? Uh, I know mm. they're all super left leaning, but I'm curious. Daniel to Dale, to that choose. freaking turd over <laughs> yeah. at CNN. Um, so yeah, headlines tomorrow. It's it's going to be hard. Uh, you know, there there's going to be the people, uh, everyone in the left wing, everyone in the the Lincoln Project conservative camp who's going to say, you know, Biden came out with a win on this one because they all said that that Kamala crushed uh, Pence. 
And yeah, they, it's insane. They, they basically blamed it on the fly effectively um, for, for the Kamala win. But, you know, if you're able to spin that, I think you're gonna be able to spin this and in, into a Biden win. And that's what I'm going to try to do. And it's sad that we're not going to get some objective standards. Cause you know, this, this stream went up to about 1.4 million. You know, I saw that uh, yeah. follower or people watching it. I don't remember what it was in the first one. Also, you know, these are different streams, so they're going to spread out the, the viewership amongst, uh, you know, all of them. So I'm curious to see how I many bet people tonight has similar compared. to the first you one. I, the first one had a total of 79 million, if I remember right. The momentum coming up to it felt about the same. And I, and I actually think it helped not having the second one kind of creating that space between them two. Yep. And then, then, then build yep. momentum up to this one. Although I, I'd find it interesting if we'd have a follow-up debate to this one. Now that Biden understands like, okay, now I need to throw some substance in here because he's learned how to behave. There won't be a follow-up. Uh, and, this is it. Oh, there, uh, oh, I know they won't. It's two, it's 13 days to the election. I, there's no way it's going to happen. And most people have like voted already. So, um, you know, so, so headlines tomorrow, I don't know. They're, they're going to spin it. They're either going to, to not declare a winner which is normally the, their way of saying Biden lost or, um, you know, they're, they're just going to really tr show Trump and his, his little moments of what they would call weakness as either going yeah. after Biden unjustly, or I, I honestly could even see them going, him going after the moderator for being a, a woman of color or something stupid like that. Eric asked a really good follow-up. He said, um, more specifically, what clips will be used? I think with that's five, a good follow up. 500 plus kids without parents. That would be the most widely uh, uh, distributed clip among uh, the legacy media for sure. I think so. It'll be, it'll be voiced as he didn't give an answer because he, he kind of gave an answer. He's like, well, we're, we're figuring it out, which is kind of the best answer. Well, I mean, what are you going to say? What department's going to help figure this out? What I think you should have pushed more. And again, I, I, I don't know as much about the topic and, and I want to see if they actually explicitly uh, differentiated these numbers but what percentage of these 500 kids came in with adults that were not proven to be their parents like what are you going to do you can't send them back to people who who might be just trafficking them and in, in to, to get into the the country easier or to do all these awful things it's, uh, so i don't i didn't not hear him and nor did biden you'd think if that was like 500 kids who were proven to be to come in with their, their biological parents, you'd think Biden would bring that up as a counterpoint. Right. And he didn't. And that tells me that, you know, this, this point is nowhere near as strong as we're all trying to claim it is, you know, it's a tragedy when any kid doesn't have their parents, but this is a, a pretty unique situation. The, the same way that if I, I get a DUI with my kids in the car, I don't go to jail with my kids thrown in there. Like it, there's a difference. You can't, you can't just play it as a, uh, you know, it's just, Trump being evil. You know, I think the other way around, if you prove these kids came in with people who are not their biological parents, it would have been spun the same way. So it doesn't really matter. You'll lose either way. So I, I do think because that is a more compelling talking point that that'll probably get used uh, more than anything else. So someone in our YouTube chat just said, I'm pretty sure there'll be something about his, I'm the least pers racist person in the room line. And I think that's probably right. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot about that one. Um, to me, that didn't, I don't think that even hit the radar. Well, uh, you know, I think that there could be, you know, you're talking spun about him attacking a person of color. Yeah. You know, I think, so I think that's a good point. Um, so between Anya and Eric's follow-up, what will the headlines look like? Well, we know they're going to be dishonest and that's what I hate, you know, so much of this and I'm going to make my video about, you know, voting and, you know, I did vote today. Um, my thoughts on that. Um, but so much of this to me is about the legacy media and just how much they need to be rejected um, fundamentally. They respond to market incentives. Market incentives brought them to this place where they're so dishonest and encourage us to hate each other. And so, um, you know, I think what you said is is pretty accurate. I, I think the headlines will be pretty skewed. Uh, they will focus on Trump. They won't focus on anything Biden said because he didn't say anything. So, you know, fair mm -hmm. enough. You can't really focus on got his name, right? You know, he did a few times uh, articulate words correctly, but uh, yeah, I think they'll, they will 
much more contort uh, than they would have otherwise had to do. You know, I, I think my main takeaway is what a surprise, right? What a surprise that Trump actually prepared for this. And, and it surprised us and they're going to, you know, they'll find a way to do it. I'm not saying they can't, they'll find a way to, to twist stuff and make it, you know, say certain things and they'll be dishonest because that's what dishonest people do. They take things that are true and they twist it into lies. So, you know, these people make a lot of money more than you and I'll ever make to be lying pieces of shit. So they'll, they're good at this. So they'll do that. Um, so to Anya's question, um, what headlines, what will the headlines be? Well, I think, you know, NBC and Washington Post and NPR and them, it'll be fact checking the thing and, you know, a few snippets here and there. Maybe think- something about low IQ. Probably calling immigrants. Yeah, that wasn't a good line. That wasn't a good line by Trump. Because that, that's one of those lines that leaves him open to too much. You, you got to, that's a bad political line. Um, but but I, I do have a good follow up question. Because this moderator played it down the middle, more down the middle, do you think there's any headlines tomorrow that attacks her? I was literally about to say that. I think there will be as many negative headlines about Kristen Welker as there will be about Donald Trump. I really do. I really do. Mm-hmm. Um, because here's the thing, all the media has to do, so they just have to make it to where there's nothing good about Trump, right? So if there's one right answer, anything other than that is fine. Or what I mean, it, sorry, for them, there's one wrong answer. Trump did a good thing. Anything other than that is fine. So they can talk about her. They can talk about the questions. They can talk about the laptop. They can talk about Trump call it, called Mexicans low IQ, you know, whatever. Uh, how he echoed, I bet you they'll, there will be some, th- some headline about how he echoed the rapist and murderer line from his campaign announcement. I, I 100% guarantee you that'll be there. Um, so there's only one wrong answer, which is to say anything positive about Trump. So they, they've got a lot of avenues. That's what I'm saying is these people are liars and they're, they're, they're paid to be liars. This is what Matt Taibbi writes about in Hate Incorporated. You know, you can be wrong, even like way wrong, and you can be, make a career out of being wrong as long as you're wrong in all the approved ways. Like you're wrong in the ways that everyone on your side is wrong about. So it's um, not only not only saying things against Trump. I think it's going to be more making sure none of the headlines, none of the the theses of any of these articles are about anything Biden said. Totally. Yes. Yes. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So to the to uh, Eric's question about the clips. I think the clips will be, you know, Trump saying uh, low IQ or, you know, or something, or maybe Biden, you know, some of Biden's about like, oh, he doesn't know. He must not know who's running. He must be confused, man. Um, you know, all, all I'll say, and I'll leave it here, then I'm going to check back with the chat, but will they have to work harder to contort the truth? Absolutely, they will, because Trump crushed this. He just did. Like, he just did he crushed this so so hard it's it, it is it's insane really to 2020 keeps throwing surprises at you i'm as surprised by this as aliens landing you know 20 yards you know so like are you just surprised because it's trump or do you think trump won this debate by a larger margin than pence won the harris debate Yes and yes, yes and yes. I am I am shocked by this because, well, I'll get into that. We can do a final like kind of takeaway mm. here in a minute. I'm gonna check the chat, but I'm just gonna say I'm stunned. And you know, I think the clip that the clips are gonna be dishonest and the uh the headlines are gonna be dishonest and so on and so forth. Um, but they they're they're gonna have to work a lot harder to lie. That's all I'm saying. So I know Eric asked you, you showed you voted today. Who'd you vote for? Say again. Said Eric asked, uh, since you voted today, you showed you voted today. Who did you vote for? I voted for the bird that he ate. <laughs> Not an eagle. I'm making a whole video about it. Eric, stay, in, stay calm. St- stand down and stand by. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what he said. One, he said the poor boys. <laughs> Which is hilarious. <laughs> like he, he said the poor boys and he said stand down and 
stay back is what I think he said. And I'm like, you couldn't even get either of those right? <laughs> like, oh my god. No, that'll be a da- daily wire headline, uh yep. poor boys, which which was funny because he's the one who brought it up during the last debate. So <laughs> it was that was pretty good. Um uh but uh so when it comes to you voting, I know you're gonna make uh why I voted for whomever video. Um I, I know I didn't really know there was a thing. Like, I was kind of confused when you came. Uh, to me and like oh we should do a kind of a voting uh, video before the election which we will do together but also I know you want to do one by yourself to explain why you voted uh, for who you voted and you know I, I, I know that Ben Shapiro had one and had a lot of pushback against the the typical people you know it's going to have pushback against uh, but I don't think his was anywhere near as compelling as someone like James Lindsay who to me seemed like a never Trumper who was like wow you voted for Trump that's insane and I think his which I know you posted the video on YouTube of of his why I'm voting for Trump kind of thing and I think it was labeled like Biden is not the the room Biden is not the room and, and it was an amazing uh, considering it's coming from someone who you think is never Trump, yeah, you know, Trump. it's really good. So um, I strongly recommend um, that that video. And, and you'll make one. I actually think I'll now make one. Although again, from you, I think it's a bit more powerful coming from the more left wing voting for Bernie last time than coming from me, who's always been a conservative. And but but I'll still explain. I'm a conservative who did not vote for him in 2016. So I'll, I'll throw it there. Um, but to get back, let's to leave this it there. Debate, let's, let's leave it. Let's leave it there. Drop it. Um, I did vote. Here's what I'll say. All right. You ready? There were people with a D next to their name that got my vote in this election. Like Donald? No. Democrats. There were Democrats. So you didn't vote for Donald? No. I don't care. There were Democrats. It's your your vote. That got my vote in this election. You're not allowed to think independently in 2020, Truman. I didn't know that. didn't know that. They got my vote in this election. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, well, all right, so, so let's go back to this thing tonight. So how many how many uh, uh, YouTube subscribers do you think you're gonna lose after that comment? Oh, that people always unsub to me if they. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Hey, yeah, yeah. Like Notice I say, I you can't, didn't you say can't lose position, them if you don't have them. I didn't say what position those people that were Democrats were. I didn't say what what position it was. Just saying there were Democrats. There were also Republicans that got my vote in this election. Just saying. Anyway, That's go on. It's good. good. Um, yeah, but really anything else? Anything else to come away with? But you know, there's a certain point in here when when he's bringing up criminal justice and, and saying we need to have drug courts and we need to have these different divisions of, of criminal justice, which to me is insane. And, and a great book, probably my favorite book of all time, uh, "The Quest for Cosmic Justice" by Thomas Sowell. First yep. book I read by him. Amazing. He brings up this example. He's like, why? Why should a person who had a really, really bad upbringing, like we feel bad for a guy, didn't have a stable family, he grows up and and he murders a 14 year old girl. Like, why should his sentence, his his minimum sentence, which which uh, Biden said he'd get rid of, at least for drug crimes. Why should it be any less for him? Because he had a bad bad upbringing. We're we're viewing it in a different way. When it comes to justice, justice doesn't mean we're going to assess how you were brought up. And then decide how we should move forward when it comes to 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 the law and, and your relationship to the law. It is about bringing justice to the person you, you have you have violated. So this fourteen year old girl who had nothing to do with your upbringing, why would she be penalized? Why why would why would you get a lesser sentence because she uh, didn't even have anything to do with your upbringing? So it's important to understand what criminal law is it has nothing to do with your upbringing is everything to do with the, the law you violated. And we can't just say uh, you should get a lesser sentence because uh, you ha- have an approved skin color or um, you, you had a bad upbringing. It has nothing to do with your upbringing. It has everything to do with the law you violated. And I think it's super important and it's really troubling to me, which I don't think most people are going to pick up on, but troubling to me. And that's a question mark that would, that would, I would add to Biden because I mean, it's kind of a disgusting thing to say. And this is the reason I have, a general um, uh, kind of vile pushback against social justice because you're adding a modifier in front of justice that means it's no longer yep. justice, right? So that's what that you, one video was about America. hyphenated Americans, about mm. pushing yeah. against hyphenated Americans instead of right. just Americans. Yeah, and um, yeah, it, it, it troubles me his 
his idea and vision. And it troubled me with Barack Obama uh, with his idea and vision, especially of crime and, and how we should apply the law because it's certainly not evenly. That's not what he's arguing for, applying the law evenly. We are a constitutional republic. We are, are a, a country of laws, not men. And when we decide willy-nilly who to apply these laws to win and hand down justice to, to certain uh, favored groups or unfavored groups, uh, we get further away from, from, from justice and more toward tyranny. And mm-hmm. I think it's a really disgusting thing that, that Biden brought up. So I'm just going to tell you some, some notes I have jotted down here. All right. And I'll let you can do whatever you want with any of those. You can talk about any of them. None I'll drink of them, them up. Doesn't matter. You can drink them up. And then um, I'll give kind of my thoughts and we can bring it to a close. So here's, here's what I have for notes. Things they talked about. This is topics, not like the things that moderator. Kids in cages, Hunter in Ukraine, um, COVID framing and the question, the economy, China, who's harder on them, who's not, uh, race relations. So there's that question about the talk. Um, the Declaration of Independence, that one line, you know, Biden tried to say it again and he still messed it up. Um, Biden said systemic racism multiple times. Laptop from hell. The institutional uh, racism. He, yeah, he said both. But systemic oh, racism was yeah. one that he that he said multiple times. Uh, laptop from hell. At one point, Trump said, so you're you're saying it's Russia. Russia did the laptop. Really? Like um, so there is that one. Um, the final answer, answer from Biden um, from the question about what are you saying on Inauguration Day? He also brought up systemic racism. Uh, there is that on the ballot. You know, this is on the ballot. That's on the ballot. And the moderator generally and how, you know, each of them handle themselves. So those are the different things. Do whatever you want with that. And then I'm kind of going to give my final thoughts um, based on that. But, you know, take mm-hmm. however long you want. Those are, yeah. those are the topics I jotted down. Yeah. Um, at first, it, it seemed uh, I'm going to speak on the moderator, at least the way she's facing or, or proposing these questions. If, if you're going to judge her strictly uh, on how she went after certain candidates, like there's some people who think a moderator should just be a unbiased moderator and just say, just give these these fluff questions wherever where, where you know, the politician has a, a revi- rehearsed response or. You have a moderator. I know Ben Shapiro put this where you'd have two moderators like Rachel Maddow and, and Sean Hannity, and they had questioned the opposing party effectively. And basically it would just mean that they're attacking each other evenly, which is, is whatever. Like, I don't think that that would be actually really helpful, but, but do what she did is she actually applied the attack on both fairly evenly. Now there's a few times that I do think that she, she ended an attack on Biden with a leading question. To basically mm-hmm. say, oh, all these horrible things that you did in the past, but what are you doing to like make everything better? Because you have a plan, right? Basically, to me, if you have if you're a moderator and the answer to any of your mm-hmm. questions is a simple yes or no, it's a bad question, right? Because you wanna because that just means you're leading, you're providing the context within the question, and then they can just say yes and no to it. Right. A bad question is do you denounce white supremacy? It's a bad question because it's stupid. You have to, you cannot provide all of the context for answering the question within the questions. It's just, it's just a bad question. And she, she kind of ended some of her questions to Biden kind of like that. She did not end any of them like that to Trump. So I would say like a squeak more left that she was leaning, but, but still terrific performance. I, I, I applaud her. She did an amazing job. Uh, 2024. I hope she gets another or does all three of them. Um, if, if we're even a Republic by that time, but um <laughs> So, so yeah, that, that's my point in the moderator when it comes to, you know, the substance, you know, who, who came out on top, I, I'm still a bit torn as to comparing this to the first debate and, and trying to assess it in a way saying did, because we both agree, right. That, that Trump lost the first debate. And I know you and I, and, and some of these communities are not popular for saying that he lost the first. Yeah, debate. I don't, I don't care, but yeah, he, not yeah. only did he lose the first debate was what made me think that he's going to lose the election. Yeah. So he lost, in my mind, not just a little, but the yeah. most he could I don't have think possibly it's remotely lost. close in that one. The same way that the VP debate, not even remotely close. There's no possible 
mental gymnastics you can do in your head that says that said come on i mean i brought this up in the the lincoln project conservative group and and they're all calling me you know a fascist or, or whatever the stupid names are and and again that's just to me is like that's insane but you know i'm trying to assess it compared to the first debate did he gain any ground that he lost during that first debate and basically kind of like i asked you did biden win this debate by a larger margin than pence won the vp debate well it's compared to the first debate did did Trump make up more ground in this debate? Did he win by a higher margin in this debate than he lost a margin wise in the first debate? To me, it's pretty close. Mm. I do think, I do think his first debate was really bad and it may have turned people off to even watching this debate. That, that's my concern there. Now I agree with you that he, he, he crushed it. I, I do think that, that Biden didn't completely lose it. I think to me, he, he, he fulfilled my expectations, which were subpar at best. So well, I had different expectations than you. So that, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. He, he, again, didn't, although he may have pooped his pants. I think I saw it maybe twice where it was a uh, uncomfortable, like cringing that, that, that I thought he did it, but right. Yeah. Who hasn't? Um, but you know, again, you so see, you're assessing by these different standards. So did he make up enough ground? Did, did he pull in again? The, the first and most important question we asked each other after the first debate, who in the middle did he went over? I do think uh, he went over people in this one. I do think he may have won over any of the, the right-leaning people who are in the middle who, who leaned Biden after the first debate. I think he may have won him back with his demeanor in this debate, and that's super important. Um, and, and then also, uh, when you come to Black and Latino support, I think uh, his, his answers on those are far, far better than Biden's were. Again, that one clip of, of them, uh, low IQ people, um, is going to be taken out of context, I bet. But, you know, I, I think overall uh, he won this debate and this is going to give him a boost. And, and, and what I can say, and I agree with you, is that this, the, this, this race was tightening, but the trajectory, since it was tightening and he's coming from a place where he was down a bit more, you know, you got to say that Trump's momentum was up and this did not slow down that momentum. And if anything, gave it a small boost. So I feel better now after this debate. I think it'll be a much closer election. And, you know, it, it, we have what 13 days that's like three years in normal time. So a lot can change between now and then. And uh, hopefully he can uh, keep the ship going forward. And that's my, my hopes of the future. What do you think? Okay. Here's what I'll say. I'm trying to manage the, the chat and everything as well. First off, can I just say, you know, we've only had, you know, however many people, doesn't matter that hang out with us for this stuff. It, it, it warms my heart more than an entire bottle and 10 more would. Why is the rum gone? Well, the rum's gone because I, my heart's so warm from the people that want to hang out with us and actually listen, hmm. you know, to these thoughts. So thank you everyone that's hanging out. I mean, seriously, it is humbling and, and the chat, the conversations are so good, dude. They're so darn good. Um, I love it. So, so that's, I just, I want to say that more than anything. Um, what did I think about this? Okay. You know, so Eric said, well, who do you think is going to win? I'm like, dude, pump the brakes. Okay. All right. I don't know who the hell knows. Um, but I agree with you that this you know, and what I said in my pre-debate analysis is after the first debate, I'm like, Trump loses. He's going to lose. I'm confident he's going to lose. And I have lots of reasons to think that. Um, that's as of then. Everything, understanding the difference between static and dynamic states is very important for, you know, doing modeling, understanding systems, so on and so forth. All of this is dynamic. In a static state, after the last debate, Trump loses. Trump loses in a static state. Things are dynamic. Um, and so am I, and what I said earlier today, before this debate, I said my um, prediction that Trump's going to lose grows less confident every day. And it has been for probably the last week, week and a half, something like that. Um, as of right now, I'm back to, I have no idea. I'm back. I have no idea. I'm not sure I'm quite at coin flip yet. I'm not sure I'm quite at coin flip. I need to see the headlines tomorrow because so much of what I do uh, and how I assess these things is based on low information diet voters, 
low information diet, which is most people. So I, I have to assess it based on the low information diet folks. And I need to look at the numbers of how many people tuned into this and so on and so forth. So I've got some different metrics that I use for assessing that. But I would say I'm closer to coin flip than I was even yesterday. Um, someone said in the chat that MSNBC was talking more about Kristen Welker than they were about either Trump or Biden. So that tells you a little bit about how they think it These went. These are dirt bags, man. Just they're, they're, dirt bags. Our, our news media are the most cancerous, parasitic, uh, toxic, caustic, corrosive elements in our society. Would you say they're um, the enemy of the people? I wouldn't because here's the thing. What I was what I was going to say is they are all this, and the reason they are those things is because we let them. It's profitable for them to be that way. The people are the enemy of the people, and the people feed the news media. It's the people that tune into MSNBC and tune into Fox News and get super high and sniff their farts on hating each other. So they that's, they that's are an important point point because profit is a pejorative nowadays, which is, I find disgusting. Right. Right. Understand profit. You're a consumer. And, it's true. and don't, don't blame profit for, for the, the poor condition yep. of our media yep. or just general economy. What I always it's say is to, they are how they are because we are how we are. We have to change if we want them to change. So whether that's Trump or whether it's Sean Hannity or whether it's Rachel Maddow, okay, or Don Lemon, whatever, they are how they are because we are how we are. So that's what I'll say. I wouldn't say they're the enemy of the people any more than they, they are who we allow them to be. Um, anyway, my, my main thoughts on this debate, um, my guess is if we go back and watch it, there are so many times that I just start dying laughing because of just how completely just, you know, caught up, you know, there's that kind of element of surprise, you know, of like, oh my gosh, what, what happened here? Um, and so I thought that there's no, like you said, I don't think there's any world where Trump loses this debate from an honest assessment. Um, in the same way that there's no honest assessment that says he won the first debate, okay? So these, these are the most clear cut right? debates in terms it's of results so true. I've ever seen. It's there so is true. no wiggle room. It's so true. So here it is. Did he lose the first debate? You bet your ass he did. There is no argument that he won the first debate, okay? There is no argument, right? You ready? Everyone watching who's good about to unsubscribe from my YouTube channel, he <laughs> lost the first debate. Come all right. On. Yep, go go join Kevin. He's going to tell you the same thing, but he lost the first debate. Now, did he win this debate? There's no there's no argument. There's no argument. Trump won this debate. He won this debate probably by as much or more than the amount that he lost the first debate. So that, to what you said earlier about the margins and did he win it by more than he lost the first? Yes, absolutely, because when it took place matters. The moderator matters because here's the thing. If Trump would have won the first debate, what would people have said? Well, Chris Wallace is a Fox News host. Of course he won. Chris Wallace is a Fox News host. Kristen Welker hosted this debate. He went into it saying, we know how this is going to go. She's a leftist. We know how this is going to go. So if he was going to lose a debate of the two, this is that one's the one to lose. It's the first one. It's the farthest from memory. This news cycle every day is approximately 30 days long. He got freaking COVID in the meantime, right? 50 cent, you know, endorsed him in the meantime. Lots of things happened in the meantime. Okay. So if he's going to lose a debate, the one where the Fox News host is the one to lose. The first one is the one to lose. This is one where him winning matters so much more matters so much more because this wasn't a Fox News host. This wasn't Chris Wallace. This wasn't Laura Ingram or something like that. This is Kristen Welker, who he came in saying, yeah, we know what to expect here. We know what to expect here. And he also and dropped a comment on her, praising her for she, her performance. And she yeah, totally she was, blushed. Oh, she yeah, totally blushed. she was. She got was Trump great. got her flustered and blood. And I think if you watch it, so I need to go back and double check this. OK, so guys, if I'm wrong. 
I'm sorry. But it seemed like she got a little more aggressive on him for maybe 10, five, 10 minutes after that, because she was maybe trying to make up for the fact that he made her blush. Yeah. And then she little, got back a little slap and tickle. It seemed like yeah, slap. <laughs> right. But, but either way, so he won this so hard he prepared. And, and by the way, I'm, I'll also say this, this is a criticism. Donald Trump, you stupid ass. The fact you did this this time shows you could have done it last time. You idiot, you moron, you child. You could have done it any of these other times. This doesn't have to be this close. This doesn't have to be this close, okay? This doesn't have to be like this. But you went to a bunch of rallies and thought that that was the same as debate prep. Okay, I don't know what happened. I don't know if you took some hydroxychloroquine, injected some bleach, and then did debate prep in the hospital. All right? I don't know what happened. But the last debate didn't have to be like that because you did this thing this time. So that's frustrating. That's a criticism. That shows that he can do things whenever he wants to do things, but he's totally fine just pulling out of his ass, you know, if he feels like doing that too. So it's frustrating that he did so well this time because he could have done so well that time. Again, if you're going to lose one, lose the one with the Fox News moderator, okay? I get it. But it is frustrating. But he was prepared. His answers were good. Biden clearly did not prepare for discipline Trump. Think about his Biden's answers, by the way, reflected that he didn't even prepare expecting to have his full time to answer questions. The dude never gave a full throated <laughs> answer with the full amount of time on any of the questions. All of the debate prep was, OK, you need to answer it in this amount of time. And probably about this window is when he's going to interrupt you. So you really only need to know what to say in the interruption. His, go back and watch it. None of his answers were prepared for like. And was was muting the mic the poison pill that they decided to take? So someone said this, um, I think in the chat, it might have been Anya, uh, it could have been Hope, but about the mic meeting, I thought, that, so they only muted the mics. So there was supposed to, so there was uh, six different 15 minute segments that they were supposed to talk mm -hmm. about. The only time the mic was supposed to be muted was during the initial two minute two response. Yeah. And they said they weren't going to mute him after that. So to your question, did it matter? I think it did. I, Cause I think Trump went into it knowing I can't talk during these times. And I think that primed him mentally for restraint. Now I think he also learned. So I think whether it's Jason Whitlock today saying, let Biden speak, he's going to do your work for you because his answers suck. Let Biden speak. I think he learned watching Pence. I do. I really do. Here, there's a difference between Donald Trump, you know, how he appears and Donald Trump as just a human being. Does he learn? Yes. Lots of people learn. Do people always apply what they learn? Not necessarily. How many doctors smoke to this day, right? So you could, there's a difference between having the information and acting on it. But did he act on the information here? He absolutely acted on the information here. He absolutely did. There is, there is no, here's a, the last thing I'll say. I, I want to think about this. I'm not sure. So if you're going to take Kristen Welker and Donald Trump okay, and, and Joe Biden, well, not, not Joe Biden, those two, Donald Trump, Kristen Welker. Kristen Welker did the best version of Kristen Welker we could have hoped for here in a normal, realistic world. Donald Trump did the best version of Donald Trump we could have hoped for in a normal, realistic world. I would even argue he did more than we could have possibly hoped for. Um, the reason why I wouldn't say that about Joe Biden is because he did the same as he's done in the other ones. And I think the only, the only thing you could have said that would be worse is now his answers suck, but as if he straight up just went full on, I don't know what's going on right now. So there is a, the bottom does get lower for him. And like we said in the um, first debate, when he hit a ceiling in the first debate, that was his ceiling. And yeah, I don't, yeah. I, although Trump lost the first debate, he didn't win. Biden did not win the debate. He won by default, just uh, ipso facto, because Trump lost, but he did nothing to win that debate. Yep. And, yeah. and he hit a ceiling. And it's nice as your opponent, as Trump, to know where the ceiling lies. Yep. That yeah. So. 
Um, I would say Trump won. Actually, Welker won. Trump tied with Welker. Welker didn't tie with Trump. Trump tied with Welker in terms of who won tonight for their performance. And Joe Biden was just left mumbling incoherent nonsense to himself, wondering what the hell happened going into it. Now, he knows that the media is going to run cover for him. Okay. And that's why I say so much. This goes back to the media for me because they're uh, lying sons of bitches that need to be held accountable. Lying dog faced pony soldiers. They are both dog faced and pony soldiers and above all liars. I agree. So the point is he knows they're going to run cover for him. There is a group of people that this matters to. There is a group of people this matters to. Like I said before in my pre-debate video, why is Obama in Pennsylvania? Why is he about to go to Florida? Why will he probably make a stop in your state and in West or wait, you're in Wisconsin and in Michigan and, you know, maybe North Carolina, you know, all those things. Are they swing states? Yes. Yes. Does it tell you a little bit about what's in play? Is Biden actually up by 10 points in Pennsylvania if that's Obama's first stop? No. So this, this race is a lot closer than we think. This race is a lot closer than we think. Trump won. There are still undecided voters. And I think that those are the people that were watching. Those are people that were watching. What did he win by total in 2016? 80,000 votes, something like that. 1.4, like you said, 1.4 million people were just watching that one ABC stream. So this race is pretty damn tight. And I think that uh, the fact that Trump won, and this is the last thing I'll say. What I said in my pre-debate video is that the way people make decisions is they have recall. They recall, you know, snapshots, little snippets here and there, okay? And for Biden, they needed to have a recall of clear answers of a known entity. For Trump, they needed to have a recall of his temperament and his demeanor. I think Biden didn't meet that standard for them in terms of known entity. No one walked away from this debate thinking that Biden's return to normalcy, like I understand him more as a result of this debate as I had going into it. No one, no one. People did walk away from this debate going, oh, he can do that. He can do that. I think I can pull the trigger here. So that's what needed to happen. There are undecideds and this debates or this race is a lot closer than we think. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. But he won. Welker did great. We'll see what the headlines are tomorrow. Yeah. And I have one last point. When, when we talked about what headlines would be out tomorrow, I went to my favorite uh, Facebook group. And, and if you guys have not listened to our, our past episodes of our collaborative podcast together, please go back and listen to them. But also, I always refer to this Facebook group that that I've kind of dubbed the name Lincoln Project Conservatives. They have their own actual name, but I don't want to throw their name out there. Uh, because although most of them have Trump derangement syndrome to an extreme, uh, really smart people and, and people who mean well, but I just think a wrong tact. I, I am filled with joy right now because I went on this group to figure out what the headlines are going to be tomorrow. And these this group of people that is 95% people who have total Trump derangement syndrome are tearing themselves apart right now. Hmm. They have a bunch of clips of old, old posts of saying how many people died of COVID compared to how many people could have died of COVID. Like, like what saying the- that he did an awful job because that's the only defense they have right now. And then you have people posting Democrats have become the party of anti-vaxxers. Like this group of people who are viscerally anti-Trump are tearing themselves apart because of this performance. And I am enjoying every second of it because if you know my stance on the the Lincoln Project Conservative types, to which full disclosure, I was probably would be considered one of them in 2016, uh, as close to never Trump as someone who would never label themselves as never Trump because I'm never going to be never a person because I don't, that's not part of my principles. These people were convinced enough by this debate to, to have uh, um, th- their ranks fall apart. They can no longer stand the coherent narrative of Trump's this evil bad man. You now see people within within that group who are, are pushing back and doing like, dude, did you watch what just happened? 
Mm. Like so- someone's giving answers and you're trying to, to hurt him because the other guy couldn't give answers. Yeah. And to me, to me, this is my ultimate lit- litmus test. So I always refer to you to, with this group because uh, again, I think it's a lot of very smart people who are just really uh, misdirected and blinded you, by their emotions or prior Bayesian priors. Well, my biggest problem you know, I posted about it with the the Lincoln Project conservative types, which are, you know, anti-Trump conservatives is they don't understand. They are the people who created Trump. They are mm. the people who laid down the preconditions to have Trump get elected because they've been so spineless through the years to stand up for their own principles. And now that these people can get backed by the well, CNNs and the MSNBCs. Is that actually their principles? The is it actually their principles, yeah. though? Well, no, it's not. It's not. It's by definition, not a principle if you're not going to stand up for it, uh, or exactly. they shift their principles to to some things that again mean more character. Which is character, you know. I, I personally want to be friends with people of high character, but when it's, I don't really care if my postman has poor character as long as he delivers the mail on time, and that's how I see the president. <laughs> I don't see him much more than a glorified postman. Um, but to see some dissent in the ranks of this this group that is so viscerally anti-Trump is encouraging to me because people are starting to debate than just be singular or straightforward. Here's our narrative. Here's our talking point. This is the way we're going to go. We're starting to see the trend lines move. And like I said, what, like 13 days or so until the election, that's a long time. And, and that's hard to keep momentum for that long in 2020, but it, it's super important to, to, to stay on task, stay on substance. I don't want to say stand narrative because I don't really care what the narrative is right now. Stay on substance and you'll have the win. And I know I'll talk about this uh, uh, during my, my voting uh, uh, podcast or, or when I let people know why I'm voting for who, you know, I, I want to be maintain... excited to know why you're voting for Biden, man. I think that's an interesting. Well, I know I just, I, you know, I Come just on, wish he, he'd give me a sniff every once in a while. That's all I'm looking for. <laughs> Um, I thought I made a pretty good healthcare joke where the doctor is <laughs> going to give you free. You'll get free universal sniffs yeah. every doctor's appointment. Mm-hmm. They will sniff your hair. Dare to dream. Um, Dare to but, dream. But but like I said, like you're you're in my my uh, episodes of why we voted for who are going to be vastly different because of where we come from is vastly different. But but where I've changed is sticking by principle, sticking by founding principle and whoever is forwarding these founding principles of individual liberty and the freedom we all see and not willing to trade that, that liberty for some security guaranteed by government. I I think it's so important to look at who is forwarding these principles instead of just looking at the character. Like if you think Canada hates us because Trump's in office, who cares? I'll pay a dollar more for my maple syrup. Not a big deal to me. I, I want someone who's going to maintain these principles and this, especially with ideas in the line, like critical race theory. And some of these, I mean, some of the worst ideas we've seen in decades, really bad ideas. Somebody's willing to fight up and fight against that. I think it's extremely important to vote on principle, not just on character, not just because of the person you like, you think you'd want to have a beer with them. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about who's going to forward the, founding principles to make sure America stays America. We don't just come some mm. generic European country, which I think would be the downfall of freedom around the world. Okay. So there's a, there's a lot here. I think we'll have to do a pre-election. So I asked in the chat, um, let me write this other one down. Um, So I asked if anyone had any final questions and someone, so the three that were really good, someone talked about section 230. Another one was two or three key issues for undecideds. And James asked about um, a lot about, there's a lot of talk about the presidency, not as much about the, uh, look at Ides of ideas. I just responded to. (laughs) I know, look at him just coming in here in the last second. Um, What's up, Bentham? Uh, about orange slices. Anyway, and then James talked about the House and the Senate and how that's there's a lot of focus on the presidency. And we're not talking about House or Senate. So those are some different things that I think we'll need to do for uh, maybe a pre-election one. Um, to, you know, in terms of 
those are all just a little bit bigger topics. The section 230 has to do with big tech, what's going to happen there. Um, you know, Jason Whitlock actually asked President Trump about, about that, uh, specifically like Whitlock was like, tech needs to be dealt with. What are you going to do? And Trump didn't really give an answer. Real quick for Jason Whitlock, for people who don't know him, sports commentator used to be at ESPN. He now yep. uh, is with Trey, Cl- Trey Clavis, Cl- Clay, Clay Travis, Travis. <laughs> Clay Travis uh, with a out, outkick.com, which is like an alternative to ESPN, except for it's not. It, and they're NBC great. Football. And they're great. Dude, I, I'm, I subscribed as a VIP member just because I want to give money to them, but that's who you're talking about. You can find it on outkick.com. Yep. Well, I shared the interview on, I think mine and Dave Rubin's mm-hmm. locals. Um, it was great. The interview anyway, but so I don't think Trump's uh, super excited to do anything with section 230. Although I think he would, it's interesting that every opportunity that you would think that Trump would be the fascist authoritarian that they say he is, he hasn't done is really quite fascinating. That's um, the worst talking think, point that I've ever heard. The I know, of fascist but they are suing Google. So, so that's, that's something we need to get more information on. Um, Senate and House is a great question, James. And that is something I think we're talking about. We did talk a little bit about that in terms of, you know, what about November 4th? What about the day after the election? And, you know, how could these races go? What are the different scenarios here? You know, we could revisit that for sure. And then the two or three issues for undecided voters. I stick with what I said in the pre-debate commentary. I totally stand by that. Demeanor versus clear answers. Trump showed the demeanor. Biden didn't have clear answers. I really think it's as simple as that. Um, you know, really, if, at least for me. Um, but all that said, uh, Kevin, what's your final thoughts? And then uh, I'll close this out here. I mean, really, I gave him, man. It's, it's you know, he, he made up ground from the first debate. I think Pence helped him a little bit in terms of, of support. Like at least uh, you talk about known quantity with Biden. What about the known quantity with Harris? I know they didn't even talk <laughs> about Harris after that, but if you're going to go second level and say, oh man, I don't know, between Trump and Biden, let's go second level to the VP. It's it's a no-brainer. It's yep. The only thing they have against Pence is because he doesn't talk to women with his, his wife not around, which is one of the most dumb things I've ever heard. Um, but, you know, he, he made up ground from that first debate. The trend lines are going in his favor. He needs to maintain those trend lines. Yep. And I, I think being someone who, who's in Wisconsin, a, a battleground state that I think is going to be very pivotal in this election, uh, it's it's kind of hard to read. I know we talked about the yard sign thing. I, I live in the most progressive part of Wisconsin, so it's only Biden and maybe like one in my whole uh, neighborhood who's got a, a Trump pen sign. That dude has, has got balls of steel. Um, and, and we talk about, you know, what what is – uh, a better indicator of who's going to vote for who, you know, who's got our signs. It's like, well, you don't only assess uh, putting a sign in the yard, but you assess the cost of the sign. You know, how long, how much does it cost me to put a new sign up every day because each sign gets vandalized or stolen or tossed in the garbage? Uh, or what does it cost to my home when I, I run the risk of getting vandalized, getting the eggs thrown at my, my uh, front door, getting a brick thrown through my window because I don't believe in the right things. You know, I think people are much more scared to put up a Trump Pence sign, depending on where they're at, than uh, a, a Biden um, Harris sign. So I think it's an important indicator. But um, I, I think people in Wisconsin, knowing the, the culture in Wisconsin, that they're, they're going to enjoy this debate. I think uh, I, I tell people, don't worry about who you're going to sit down and have a beer with. Well, that's everything in Wisconsin. You, you don't you base every character move based on if you want to have a, a sit down and have a beer with them pretty obvious uh that uh it would be much more fun to sit down and have a beer with trump than than biden who would have to run to the bathroom every 10 seconds <laughs> while drinking a Bud Light. so um you know it, it comes down to this and like i said maintain the momentum uh and, and and keep keep on task and like show you're an adult it's all about yep. the adults in the room and today uh trump showed he's an adult that's right. Um, my last thought is this. Okay, well, actually, I have two, and then I'll call it. You're right about the adult thing. Trump did appear like an adult, uh, which is a rarity for him, but it's good for people to be reminded of that now, right? Um, I do think this will impact 
the outcome. I do, because I think this will be the kernel that people draw uh, call to mind. Uh, the second thing I'll say is the only October surprises we've seen so far have come from the Trump camp. We haven't seen well, any from the Biden camp. There's okay. been attempts with the, the the Chinese, which I'm very surprised they asked the question, but the, the Chinese uh, secret bank, bank account. I know. Very dumb stuff from the last. That's not yeah. that's not the October surprise from them. It's not. Whenever I get an update from HuffPo, NBC, CNN, NPR, Washington Post, New York Times, and everyone down the line on my phone, that's our October surprise. We haven't seen any from the left. So that means we need to keep our ears to the ground on that or they don't have anything. My guess is they have something, okay? I doubt it because most pe- a lot of people voted already. You got to hit it early. That's true. I, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying the odds of there being no quote unquote bombshell at this point are very slim. That's all. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They'll make a bombshell on anything. So I guess I agree. Right. You. Well, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> Trump put ketchup on his hot dog and he said previously that he only eats spicy mustard on a hot dog. So <laughs> and sneezed on a puppy. That's right. COVID. Well, you know, that's just a Saturday. Who doesn't see on puppies? So my, I, what I will say is that things are looking good, but we still have what, you know, what do you say? Nine, 13, nine, 12, 12, 12 days yeah. till the election. Okay. It's crazy. Uh, and then things really get interesting, but the odds of there being nothing from the left, because I think the right has kind of played their hand here. It's going to be at the stuff with the Hunter Biden laptop. Okay. So we kind of know what to expect from the right right now. There probably will be something from the left. I don't know what it'll be. I don't know how true it'll be. I don't know how effective it'll be, you know? So anyway, um, but he won. And that's, that's pretty fascinating. We didn't just, like I said, tonight was full of, you know, surprises and people being uncharacteristic. That's 2020 for you, everyone. So we don't know what to expect, uh, but... We'll be experiencing it together, figuring it out together. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone who is watching. Thank you for everyone who is submitting questions in the chat. I did write them down. I got lots of notes here, okay? So we have stuff to talk about, uh, especially for like some pre-debate stuff. And as Kevin mentioned, some you know voting things. Um, so we have other things to discuss, and that will be happening. I appreciate everyone who watched. I uh, appreciate everyone who was in the chat and, you know, spending the evening with us and, you know, taking shots of wine, looking at you, sis, uh, trying to get me to kill my liver before election night. Shame on you. Um, everyone, please go over and subscribe to Kevin's YouTube channel. That's engineering politics, uh, return or locals is engineering poli- ENG. No, it's engineering politics.locals.com. Yes. Um, follow him on Twitter, ENG underscore politics. He's on ThinkSpot, Engineering Politics. Uh, he's on uh, Parlor, I believe, as well. He has his own website, Engineering Politics. Um, Kevin, did I miss anything? You need People need to go check out your stuff in all those places and anywhere else I missed. What did I miss? Uh, no, nothing. Uh, also, hit up Truman, uh, Return to Reason on YouTube. And if you unsubscribe to them, I hope you die in a fire car crash. Um, right. Cold and, burning uh, car. It's right. by Joe Biden. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, Joe. Anyways, um, you got Twitter at my mundane mind. You have locals at return to reason A lot of people are on the live chat right now. I, I love doing that on there, and it's an awesome feature locals provided. And you guys always have awesome chats in there. Uh, they do great, man. they're a lot Think of fun. Spot. Hey, you're on Think Spot as well. Uh, did I miss anything with you? Uh, you, you post on medium.com. Medium. Yeah. And uh, your writing's awesome. I, I went back and reread part one uh, of um, the, the riot defending riots in defense, in defense of, of riots. riots. You're like, I, I come from a technical writing background. I think I can lay out facts fairly well, the way that you can, can build a narrative, which I know is sometimes seen as a bad thing, but a narrative is what compels the human condition. It is what allows us as human beings to understand the world that's around us. I think you did an amazing job 
in that first part. I didn't get the second part yet, which you just posted recently. I believe it's going to be three parts total. Am I correct? <laughs> I guess it's going to be closer to five or six, to be honest. Yeah. But, but, but I just did join, post part two. Yeah, man. Join his locals community. He does an amazing job at writing. Uh, again, really entertaining stuff, really compelling stuff. Uh, and I can't say enough about your work, man. You did a great job. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right, everyone. Uh, Kevin, you want to go ahead and pass me host and we can stop that YouTube live stream. Everyone stay up to date. Uh, We'll be posting this uh, in our respective, you know, uh, platforms and so on and so forth. Um, And, you know, we'll, we'll keep you posted on what's to come. Uh, I appreciate you coming and checking it out. I know Kevin does too. Um, Watching us, you know, drink ourselves to death with our uh, honey whiskey and his, uh, cheap brandy, whatever people do in Wisconsin. Um, but 